presenting against all authority is going to be psionic. I believe this is actually the first time I've streamed against all authority in the SC2 ITL, which is a bit of a shame because they're a pretty good team, of course, and they've got some pretty good players, as I've already mentioned. And obviously, they've uh, clearly already had a couple of uh, uh, good matches because they've, uh, they of course, to, to let me just uh, very quickly check for you guys who exactly they have beaten so far. Let's just uh, get this up in just a moment and uh, be able to check who uh, who against all authority are already uh, beaten in their group. I think they've beaten... I actually have no idea at all who they've played. Um, here we go. Finally getting here. Finally getting there. As I said, they're eight. Uh, they're two-two right now, uh, with a plus five indicator. So they've been doing pretty well for themselves. ESC with three to one are also on plus five. So again, a victory here for AAA would put them against uh, ahead of ESC. So AAA they've already beaten Team Spectre, four zero. They've uh, lost to Mind Santi three to four. Very close match there. They beat Corner G Sports four zero as well. And then just last. Uh, and then yes, this week they've already lost to Mind Santi. Uh, missing in action. 2 to 4. So, a mix of results, uh, some solid results against some good teams, and uh, some strong results even when they've lost as well. ESC, they uh, also beat Mayan Sandy 4 to 2. Uh, they've beaten Mayan Sandy 4 to 2. They beat Derava Capsa 4 1, Spectre 4 2, and they have only lost as well uh, to Carnage, which I mentioned earlier on in this broadcast as we got started. That was this week, which we saw on the stream. So, no left hand corner, the green Zerg player representing ESC Icy Box. It is Aries. Alright, so how is everyone doing in the chat? There's not too many people hidden here right now. Hopefully that will pick up as the uh, games go on. Excuse me while I just uh, very quickly tab for a second. Alright, okay, cool. Alright, so um, yeah, how are you all doing? Let me know how you all feel in the chat. Let me know if anyone is cheering on for anyone in particular. As uh, we do see it to start off here, the pro blocking this hatchery. We have had a pool first out of our Zerg player. We are on a gateway first, I believe. Or is it Nexus first? It's Nexus first. No, it's a gateway. It's, uh, it's had a lot of minerals building up, but I uh, used that on the Cyber Nexus core. And so we have a gateway expand against the pool, followed by a hatch. And uh, our, pro our Zerg player is about to see that there's no Nexus coming down in just a couple of moments here as he approaches the front of the natural of his opponent. So Ares is going to be able to uh, respond. Um, as 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 he likes against this gateway expand, he's gonna have a pretty good idea of what's going on. As he even moves his uh, overlord into the main base to try and uh, see what is up. So we got a bit of lag from one of the streamers now, as we have our second pause here of this game. So um, hopefully this can get sorted out in just a few moments' time. This is from the French stream. Uh, looks as though these guys are going to go once again here in just a couple of moments, so... We've got a countdown, we're getting back in game. And, uh... This probe is going to get chased away here by these couple of links which have come out now for Aries. He's uh, seen this first Zelt coming out here and he sees a Chrono Boost on uh, most likely a, uh, well he actually doesn't know exactly what it is yet, but it is a Sentry coming out here for Psionic. So just going to take his expansion very slowly, going to start building up Sentry Energy very uh, quickly, very early on as well. Whether that is for, uh, oh my god, the lags in this game are absolutely ridiculous. Um, and that is, uh, oh my god, is this probe going to die? Is he going to get the probe? He does get the probe. And he's two Zerg, and still see no Nexus, so he knows it's a pretty late expand. Now he actually moves up the ram and sees the sentry, and he's going to get a pretty decent scout off here. He's going to be able to see the whole of the base, and uh, this is uh, just a little bit annoying. I mean, it just tells him exactly what's going on. He, if he stays live long enough, he'll even see the second sentry coming out of his opponent, and that could be a huge tell as to what exactly his opponent is um, likely to go for in this game. He doesn't see that second sentry pop out as the Zealot does catch the Ling uh, around the back of the mineral line. 
So two sentries uh, before the expansion comes down, this uh, and a third one on the way. Very possible we see some kind of big timing push here from Psionic with a lot of force field energy, maybe fairly early on. He's uh, well, gets a lot uh, well on the way as well, as uh, it's about 100 seconds completed. So let's see what he wants to do. I mean, he's just uh, adding on even more sentries. He's going to have a lot of force fields, and again, that allows him, if he wants to, to go for a bit of an aggressive play. But it also, of course, allows him to be very, very defensive too, as uh, he's just uh, getting set right now. And uh, adds on another pylon to complete his wall with the Zealot. Third base on the way for Ares. He's uh, not going to mess around too much about getting that down. He did open gas. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he opened gasless. And uh, he's just now taking his gasless. So not a mega quick third, but a fairly quick third from the Zerg player uh, to get things started here for himself. And a fourth gateway coming down for Psionic. So four gateways, and this could definitely indicate a push, especially with all of these uh, uh, sentries. Which he has. He's actually pulling these into the main base now, so he's going to attack this over. He's going to kill this off. Uh, I suppose he wanted to preferably try and kill this before he sees the fourth gateway, because seeing the fourth gateway is going to immediately suggest here some kind of aggression. As uh, Psionic says, really, I'm not sure if that's about the Overlord Scout or whether it's about the observers continuing to lag. Psionic sitting above the natural here with his mothership core is uh, is this going to be his time to move out? Uh, he walks in the zealot and the sentry, and it looks as though it will be. Now this mothership core is pretty late to come out here, so he's not going to have energy for recall for about another 40 seconds. I suppose he'll just about have that energy when it uh, gets on over to the other side of the map and before uh, anything really happens. A Rotron about to finish for Ares. His uh, metabolic boost about, half about halfway done as well, which means he's setting up for a pretty solid defense here. He just needs to make sure he's going to be able to make units, and he definitely is. He has uh, plenty of supply free. He's got plenty of money banked up, and as soon as the Rotron finishes, he makes seven roaches. He's got a little bit more lava. I'm surprised he's not actually making even more roaches, knowing this attack is coming across the map. Uh... But I suppose he knows uh, how to deal with this a little bit better than I would. And uh, a couple of force fields here do initially catch this queen. And now he's making a couple more roaches. Now he's making some more zerglings too. And is it just going to be a little bit too late? This is uh, this is ridiculous. Game paused. Alright, so it looks as though Psionic is going to start this off again. And uh, this third base is under attack right now from Psionic and Ares just does not have enough to deal with this. Oh really? Someone's still lagging? What is going on? Game paused. I, what what was it even was that? Like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever quite seen lag like this. It's, uh, that was uh, definitely quite impressive. We're going to get started once again in this game. See what happens. It looks as though it's better as these roaches start to come in. No, it's not. And it is going to be Fox, so... The French stream is <laughs> having some issues. As this third base is going to fall, uh, almost definitely. It's on 75 HP. Um, but yes, Ares, he didn't seem quite prepared enough for this. <laughs> he recalled? He's not recalling yet, though. I don't think the recall uh, ran through. I guess Ares quite, uh, doesn't uh, completely know, actually. He's uh, probably not quite in range to see whether these sent. I guess he does with the hatchery. Alright, so Sionis going to get this uh, hatchery early on, and we'll talk about the uh, consequences of that here in just a moment. He didn't actually get the recall down so he's uh, moves away for a moment, goes back in, gets the hatchery and now is his time to like uh, most likely recall. Uses a couple of force fields, not really the best force fields, allowing the lings and roaches to come forward here and he loses a little bit more before he does get that recall on out. So hopefully all the lag issues are now solved and this game will be able to continue on as uh, 
normal. A couple of pounds getting turned, uh, killed off here. And again, Ares, he saw this attack initially coming across the map and he didn't immediately build everything he uh, possibly could have. He invested in his roach speed and, uh, you know, he just uh, he uh, just took some time to really spend all of his money. And that was uh, maybe why he did end up losing. He didn't get as many units in position as soon as he would have liked. However, uh, it's probably worthwhile noting that this third base going down is definitely by no means the end of the game. Yes, it puts Simonic in a pretty decent position, but look at the timing of his tech. His double forge only just now about to finish. His robot facility not even finished yet. So this counterattack is going to do some damage itself. And I think overall this game is going to look pretty even uh, with all said and done. Uh, once that third base comes back up for the... Uh, Zerg player, oh no, oh, he has Boro, and there's no Robo facility just yet, so this is pretty huge having Boro here. He's going to pop up, get another pylon, or well, not quite yet, but now he does, and uh, he's going to get another pylon, and uh, more roaches and lings actually coming forward here. Ares is going to try and break on through. Uh, Sionic's going to be able to hold for now with a couple of uh, well-placed force fields there, finally blocking the rest of the units out, but again, Ares is, an all is in an alright spot. Both players are making workers behind this. And, uh, of course, both players are now investing in their upgrades. But this third base is going to be back up here in just a moment. And Ares, he's uh, going to be able to resume mining. I definitely think that because of the lateness of uh, Psyonix tech here. So Psyonix tech is... Uh, <clears throat> pretty late. His first immortal is uh, only just now on the way, and that's a big, big factor in a situation like this. It means that despite not having this third base economy for quite some time, Ares doesn't really have to worry about a mega strong timing for at least another minute, minute and a half or so, which is plenty of time for him to actually get a good number of hydras out and to resume mining from this third base. And it's all because of how much uh, Sionok did commit to that early attack. Ares moving in here, he's going to trade against sentries, he gets one and he gets two, and he's going to get a few more as the force fields don't really block out all of these roaches. The stalkers and the sentries continue there, uh, they will kill all of these off, but he's going to lose a good number of sentries in this, and this really makes any kind of a, uh, you know, Secondary attack from Psionic a little bit redundant and Immortal now does pop out and 1-1 one, one is about to complete but the damage is already done down to two sentries from the initial god knows how many I mean seven eight nine sentries killed in the game and this has definitely been worthwhile trades for Ares on his opponent's side of the map Psionic is in uh, definitely a little bit of trouble right now as he does uh, throw down this uh, pylon Psionic asks for a pause how many times are we going to pause in this game? I don't even know. I don't think I've ever had this many delays in a singular game. But hey. Who knows. Looks as though for I think the sixth time now <laughs> we're going to get going again. At least this time nothing was really uh, going on. Second Immortal is about to pop out, 1-1 one, is about to finish, and is this going to be the timing that Sionic is going to try and hit? I don't think so, his third base is about to start up here. Maybe if he uh, didn't lose all, the, all of them sentries, he would have maybe tried to move out right now, but as it stands, I don't really think he can. Look at this, a rave of Roach Hydra coming across the map. The force fields are going to have to be absolutely pristine here to survive this, and they are pretty good for now, blocking off a lot of these Hydralisks in the back, allowing these Immortals and these Stalkers to do the DPS they need to do, but is it going to be enough for him? This Immortal pulling backwards here as these Roaches kind of move command through the units, but I think there's just too much DPS for our Zerg player Ares, and... It looks as though everything is going to end up going down. And, uh, I mean, on both sides, actually, but both of the immortals are going to die off, I hear. I believe these two hydras are chasing him. This immortal might just get away from warping his zealots. Yes, it will. Going to get a sentry to the left hand side, though, and these stalkers are in a little bit of trouble still. And, um,. Psionic, is, he is going to clean this up, but again, damage has been taken. He's lost all his sentries now. He's lost one of his immortals too. And it's really looking tough for him to really get into any kind of decent position in this game. That being said, Ares is throwing a lot of units towards him. So if we actually look at the resources lost, it's fairly even. It's actually in favor of Psionic. He just needs to be able to get a couple more tech units out once again and be able to survive maybe one more wave. And this next wave is actually pretty much pure roaches. So a couple of immortals... Should be able to deal with this pretty easily, but oh, one Immortal is a bit out of position. It's going to go down in just a couple of hits, and another Immortal is pretty close to the front. You need to be very careful about that. Zealot's coming in here. We'll start to tank a lot, and these, uh, this Immortal is actually oh, this is actually brilliant for Psionic. He traps all of these Roaches in with a warp in, 
There is a uh, burrow coming down now, but the observer is nearby. He's going to be able to come over here and kill off all of these roaches. More roaches now coming in from behind. Once again, there's a mortal's under attack, but a second immortal pops out. It looks as though Psyonix's going to be able to hold on here. He's going to lose one more mortal. Maybe no, it gets the roaches get turned around and around. And it looks as though Sionic does hold on, and all of a sudden, I really uh, do favor his chances in this game. Once again, loses one more mortal as this fight continues. And Ares, I think he needs to just back off and give it a break. He's uh, thrown a little bit too much at this now, I feel, and the uh, resources lost in the last little bit of that fight there has uh, changed dramatically, as you can see, now almost a 2k advantage in favour of Psyonic, who has a third base up. It's now mine, and he's been able to hold on to this throughout all of this aggression, and Ares, I think, has really been overcommitting just a little bit too much throughout this, as the Roaches uh, turn it around, I believe. Uh, okay, getting caught in a time but they might get caught in some force fields as well, and a few more of them do go down, three to be exact, the Burrow doesn't help him out. And Ares really needs something else on the map right now. I'm not too sure why he hasn't gone back into Hydra Risk Production. You know, he's got that Hydra Den up. He's got plus two missiles. You know, Roach Hydra would be so much more effective than him for Roaches right now, you know. But he's been so kind of determined to just continue attacking and just never giving up. And just, obviously, he doesn't want to make Hydras because he wants to keep attacking. And if he keeps attacking and makes Hydras, the Hydras can't cross the map quite so quickly as the Roaches. But there's just too much of an army here right now, surely. He's going to start a step away from this army, killing off the Zelda on his way, but he gets caught by a huge number of force fields, and that's a huge number of his roaches which is going to get caught in this, and now he's going to come in, he's going to try and just fight this. He gets one of the immortals, some more force fields come down to block once again the majority of these roaches. A third immortal joins this army once again, and uh, these roaches are all going to go down. Aspire on the way, finding some more hydras in production. But Ares has just uh, continued this attack and it's not worked out. Another beautifully placed force field here by Psionic. Stops these roaches from uh, getting too far, uh, escaping completely. And uh, they will be trapped in here. Two roaches maybe going to escape to the left hand side. But that's about it. Simon can transfer some workers over to his third base. Finally, a fourth base has been established for Ares as well. Something he definitely needs. Now, you can see his main base is more or less mined out. We're 17 minutes in this game. It's been action packed from start to finish. Uh, despite all of the uh, pauses and disruptions we have had. And now Ares sits in a pretty bad position. I mean, Sionic needs a lot more gas to really spend his money. But, uh, oh my god. Oh my god, what does this poor zealot do? This poor zealot. Wow. <laughs> that mothership guard zealot must have said something really fucking nasty to that mothership core because that mothership core was not happy at all. Tutune is now on the way for Psionics to continue his upgrades finally after holding off this aggression starts up his Twilight Council uh, research uh, upgrades as well. Blink is going to be the first one out of there. Roach Hydra again still on the map for Ares now as he uh, has been continuing to max out here but there's a scary number of sentries with a scary amount of energy creep is going to start being denied as a wall prison comes across the map as well and with four immortals in this composition and two it's going to be a very scary army in just a few moments time as Ares is just going to sit in this concave and try and engage it. I mean, that fighting now would be better than fighting later as 2-2 is not yet finished. Force fields should go down here. Time warp is pretty nice. The force fields aren't that great. We do actually miss a lot of this army. And uh, for now, Ares will hold on. But Simon probably doesn't want to rush into engagement just yet anyway. He wants his 2-2 to finish 50 seconds away. There's no reason to wait anymore. Uh, there's no reason to not wait anymore, I should say. And, uh, well, he's uh, going to move forward. He's cleaned out a lot of this creep. And uh, all of this uh, creep is actually going to end up going down. A couple of uh, tumors left over here. Uh, we'll actually turn around to clean this up. Ares, though, he knows where his opponent's army is, and he will look for maybe... Oh, wow. Ares, Sionic has absolutely no idea that his opponent's army here. He is, uh, he's going to lose his third base. There's nothing here to defend. There's a handful of sentries, a handful of stalkers. That's not enough to defend against the whole army. However, the uh, Zerg army may very well find itself trapped in. And a couple of force fields coming down. He's just going to turn around. He's going to come in. He's just going to try and fight. And this is a pretty good fight for him. The concave in his favor. And Sionic cannot really move forward here just yet. A few sentries and stalkers are here. And they are moving forward. A big warping of stalkers as well. Blink has now finished. So has 2-2. What is Sionic going to do? He has a recall in just a few in about 20 seconds and that recall could allow him to come back to his third base to defend regrouping with absolutely everything right now and he's going to come in all from the same direction and Ares has to be careful he's actually moved commanding a few of his units a bit too far and they're going to get caught without being much help at all and now 
His army isn't that scary at all, just a handful of Hydralisks in with some roaches. And these Immortals are going to shred through the tanky roaches at the front, and that's going to leave these Hydras exposed in the back, and Immortal in the back, unfortunately, does get picked off immediately. But Ares is going to lose his whole army here. And what he was trying to do initially, I think, was good, but he just didn't have the time to do what he wanted, and now he loses his whole of his army for being up here, and uh, he's going to lose the rest of these roaches as well, which are all trying to escape, and uh, Stork is just going to blink on top of them, and Burrow will save them for now. And what does Ares have? Does he even have any units on the map? 9 Hydras, 13 Roaches, 10 more Hydras in production. They're all joining up to the, uh, in between the space between his third and natural. Again, he's going to go for pretty much just one last stand here. As a few more Hydras come in, a big blink forward from a lot of these Stalkers. Overlords are going to start going down and Ares looking as though he's in a lot of trouble. The rest of these units, co uh, units coming forward and now the drones are even being pulled as well but the force fields are perfect to block these drones from coming through and uh, just make them come through in a single file. Coming from the right hand side as well, but it's just not going to matter. There's nothing Ares can do anymore. 100, 120, and dropping supply down. GG, well played. Shouldn't have been too confident. At least he identifies his mistake. And it, it actually gives us a little bit of insight as to what was he actually thinking there. When he just kept on fighting, he obviously thought he could just keep fighting and fighting. And yes, initially it was going very well, but there was a is what we saw and that was him just falling too far behind in the game so GG well played game number one goes to against all authority here in ESC oh man they're having a tough couple of weeks here in the SC2 ITL if they can't turn this around we'll see who their next player is in a few moments time until then guys we're gonna hit a quick commercial break so please do stay tuned we'll be back with game number two in just a few moments it is all kill so Psionic will stay on to play against the next player from ESC we'll find out who that is in a few moments time in the meantime do come check us out on Twitter at SC2 underscore improve Twitter us hashtag SC2 ITL and let us know who you uh, are supporting here today against all authority or ESC and let us know which players you'd like to see playing here today as well so we'll be back in just a few moments time guys a quick commercial break and a word from our sponsors Zowie Gear Season 2 match between against all authority and ESC currently we see AAA against all authority lead 1-0 to zero with the next player from ESC though gonna be one of their better players it's gonna be Goody coming out next let's see if he can turn this around and even things up here in this best of seven all kill clan well I'm Wardy a pleasure to have you all joining in if you're just tuning in from the Acer Team Story Cup match then welcome to the stream we hope you uh, here to enjoy some more action, another team match for you guys if you're just tuning in from there. As it is a best of seven all kill here in the SC2 ITL, two fantastic teams against all authority and ESC. And we're going to jump into this game right now. It is going to be Habitation Station for TVP between none over than the Panzer General himself, Goody, representing ESC. And in the upper right hand corner, the Red Pros player representing against all authority, it's Psionic. Taking game number one against uh, Ares after Ares overcommitted quite a bit to his uh, counter attack and uh, kept on making roaches when really he needed to stop, turn around, go home, and tech. Uh, so just a bit of an overcommitment there from Ares allowed Sion to take that next game, uh, take that first game. Now Goody, the next player up from ESC, is going to look to uh, turn things around here. Interested to see whether we'll see the mech play out of him. I mean, he does like to use that even in TVP, he's got it very well figured out. Uh, of course, he uses it all the time, so intrigued if we see that Habitation Station is the map, and I believe this is a pretty good map for Mech. I mean, it's not the largest of maps, but the kind of surface you, you can cover so easily. This third base very easy, you know, you can cover, well, down here this third base. This base is actually pretty hard to hold, especially if they start going for Tempests. Um, but that being said, you can kind of have Vikings. I've seen, uh, I think, Goody versus Adonis, actually. That must have been Cascade versus ESC in so in some earlier week here in the SC2 ITL, and uh, maybe it was e maybe it was actually even in the playoffs of last season where they were playing on. It must have been last season because they were playing on Polar Night, and oh my god, Goody had like 30 Vikings against the Tempests, and it was just it was a pretty crazy game. Uh, I think Adonis actually ended up taking that, but uh, 
It was uh, pretty crazy to watch nonetheless. Let's see how uh, we're going to open up with here. It's going to be goody with the fast expand. Gasless as well, so Simon can identify this almost immediately here with this probe. Coming into the main base. Gets locked in though, so he's going to end up losing this. Just a little bit annoying. He would have rather had that back out on the map. Maybe just go back home to mine. Anything would have been a bit better than uh, sticking around. Seeing even more of what he's already seen basically. Which is these two gases not being taken. And goody with uh, this marine. Gonna chase down this probe, gonna be a bit of a micro war while this happens, but uh, in the end the probe is just completely trapped. Can't get out of there at all, and the probe does go down as uh, the SCV scout from Goody gonna come into the main base of the Peros player right now as well. He's gonna see two gases are up, he's gonna see no zealot being made, and he's gonna be able to also see there's only two workers in each of the gases, so it's not as though it's gonna be the, the fastest tech in the world out of Psionic, and it's most likely more than anything gonna just be a mothership core expand as Goody does come down to the lower ground and start his own expansion right about now. So, fast expand, maybe going to look to take this double gas next if he wants to go into that mech play, unless he wants to play really greedy and go for 3cc off of no gas. First Stalker now on the way. Well, Stalker's being chrono boosted, an interesting decision by Psionic. We saw in game number one, he was not the kind of player to uh, rush out that fast expand, but of course that was uh, to lead into a big attack, so... And it was a different matchup, of course, as well. So much different here as uh, this uh, probe does come down to build this next. This is exactly what this SCV wants to see. And uh, the Stalker will chase this SCV away. Shouldn't be able to uh, block for too long here. And uh, Sion gets this Nexus down pretty quickly. So single Stalker out just to make sure to clean up this SCV to start mo moving across the map. Poke across here. See what is up. And there's that double gas coming down from Goody. And Engineering Bay as well, though. Uh, most likely the engineering bay to deal with the oracles. I mean, for, uh, with a gasless expand like this, you need turrets to be able to be safe from oracles. Because if you don't have turrets, you're just never going to have the number of marines you need to really be able to counter that. So, right now he does have, uh, he will have six marines on the uh, natural. But he needs this turret in the main base to make sure that he can defend both locations at the same time. So, good to be getting well prepared here for this uh, first uh, little uh, bit of... <coughs> uh, defense and it's going to work out quite well for him of course with this Stargate coming up it's not been a worthless investment so Stalker getting turned away at the front here by this uh, bunker he will just leave this on patrol at the front now and uh, we're actually going to see a Phoenix to start things off alright well that's a little bit interesting I was personally expecting the Oracle myself and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people probably expecting the Oracle as well but no um, the Phoenix it's going to be and you know this Considering he saw the gases expand, this really makes me start to wonder just a little bit because what can he obtain? Uh, what can he achieve with the phoenixes? I mean, yes, he can kill some workers, but they, you know, there's going to be a certain amount of marines out. And generally, I think phoenix play is really good against any kind of early gas where you continue to mine gas to make a factory and then you go for a widow mine drop you know phoenixes are great there they can pick up a helion they can pick up a mine to take it out of the fight they can shut down the medivac drop play as well but here against the gases expand what does it really serve to do he's leaving them kind of in the middle of the map here as though they are just a block from drops oh i guess yeah uh, i guess maybe he's thinking ahead and he's expecting some kind of uh, banshee play we do see a tech lab coming down and i suppose it could be for a banshee but i kind of uh, i don't think so i think this isn't timed out the best if he does want to go for a banshee maybe yeah, i guess it could be you know he's gonna make a tank Kinda of hard to say right now, he's still got this bunk on the low ground, a reactor on this barracks is going to allow him to just pump out double marines. And uh, this tank production. Phoenix is now coming in and they're going to be able to deny this starport from building for just a couple of more seconds. Uh, Goody will be able to get back on that and uh, kill off pretty easily. More marines coming in from the uh, natural. And uh, these Phoenix is going to get zoned out here. They're going to fly through the natural as well, but there's a turret here, so they have to be very careful, especially with that Phoenix uh, having lost all of its shields already. And a couple of meals being dropped. So Goody knows exactly what his opponent's up to right now. He knows his tech choice is the Phoenixes. And it'll be interesting to see how he responds to this. He does still make this Medivac. And is he going to go for some kind of just crazy, like, Medivac Marine, Medivac Marine tank push? It's... At this point, it definitely is a possibility as these uh, Phoenixes get, grab themselves another kill. That is uh, three kills on the board right now for Psionic. First kill, of course, was that SCV on his opponent's side of the map. Now going into immortal production as well as the Robo Bay. I think a good mix of Immortals and Colossi are always... Uh, you know, needed against uh, playing when you play against mech. The Colossi can clean up Hellbats, etc. in the front very easily. Oh, the Phoenixes, one of them gets picked off here as Goody is looking to move out for this attack. Very, very interesting, and we'll see how much he's going to be able to achieve. I mean, there actually isn't too much on the ground for his opponent. 
And uh, of course he's going to heavily rely on these phoenixes to probably pick up these tanks to kind of disengage. This mothership core needs to be very careful as well. Losing this would be a big, big uh, loss because his uh, whole defense is basically based around this thrown overcharge right now. Yes, he's got an immortal out, but a single immortal against this number of marines isn't going to make too much of a difference. And uh, these phoenixes, they need to come in. They need to pick up the tanks from behind. Goody, is he just going to sit on this low ground and deny this gas? He looks as though he could. He's got a third base coming up behind this guy. So he's not all in with this player at all. He's thinking ahead in the game. He's starting with Viking and uh, still making SCVs as well. This has just been a bit of a big a big pressure. It's actually very hard, I suppose, to fully commit with this because as soon as you siege up, if you siege up within range of this throw and overcharge, you're probably going to lose a tank simply because it takes that time to unsiege. Uh, so Goody just being uh, careful here, maybe trying to force some more units where Psionic didn't really need to make them. And now he's just going to fall back home. And uh, again, he's uh, starting to build Vikings here, and he's probably looking ahead, thinking about the possibilities of his opponent. What can he do? Well, he's got a Stargate. He could very quickly go into anti uh, into just airplay to try and shut down my mech. And uh, he's, again, just kind of covering all the bases right now. Two more factories on the way, so we're going to see a kind of transition here from the Marine tank into the full-on mech play. And... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of armories coming down in the near future as well. He's got this third base up and he's going to be able to get that actually running and mining in the very near future. And once that comes down, I think no other reason to st stop himself from uh, getting the double upgrades rolling. Second starport, very interesting actually. Whoa, two more starports? I said that would be funny. Starports? Two more starports. Whoa, goody. I'm really uh, going for something a little bit different here. Loses a Phoenix though, does Psionic, and uh, that's just a little bit of an overcommitment from him, a little bit of uh, miscontrol maybe. As uh, he was in range of this bunker for a little while, and then, then Vikings coming in and shut that down. Two more starports, what's he going to do here? Is he just going to make a lot of Vikings? Based on what has he seen, I mean, he hasn't actually really seen that much at all. He hasn't seen anything to do with the uh, Robo facility. He hasn't uh, seen the Robo Bay either, I assume. No, he hasn't, so. Is he just going to go into uh, a lot of Viking production here? He's not adding any add-ons on just yet. I guess one possibility would be to go for some Banshees. It'd be pretty weird though. I guess he's just assuming he needs a lot of Vikings based on this uh, Phoenix opening from his opponent. And well, Psionic's actually going to get aggressive here in just a moment. Goody is sieged up, so there shouldn't really be any way for Psionic to push in here unless he comes from this angle here, which is the only area which Goody doesn't really have covered right now. There's definitely a possibility as Goody is sitting on the high ground, does now move down. He's going to force cancel on this fourth base almost immediately. And he actually uh, gets the kill on that. But uh, Vikings chasing and what's the anti ever Goody right now? Just a handful of Phoenixes and two sentries. Can't really commit too, more, just too much more forward, too much uh, further forward, I don't think. Sionic is going to have to just fall back as the barracks is coming out to scout any incoming army movements from his opponent. Some tanks moving into a little bit of a bare position to fully cover this ramp now and from this uh, and from this southern position. And it looks as though Sionic is uh, joining up with the rest of his army. Is he going to continue with his attack or not? Three Vikings being produced at a time, so I mean this is going to turn out great for Goody in the end. The Vikings definitely needed against the Colossi. And two more Stargates also coming up for Psionic. So, again, this is something people do tend to do against Mech. They say, well, one of the best ways to uh, deal with this is most likely to go for a lot of air myself. Now, I haven't seen a Fleet Beacon come up yet, so unless I missed that, which I haven't, we're not going to see any Tempests or Carriers just yet. So, what is he going to use these Stargates for? Well, Void Raiders are definitely a good possibility for now to begin with. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if we, in the fairly near future, we did see with this third base up running and mining for Psionic. If we did see the, that Fleet Beacon come down and the investment into some Tempest, the investment into some uh, carriers, maybe. Templar Archives is on the way. A lot of Vikings are out here. I wonder if he's just saving them Stargates to remax on something a little bit later on. Plus three is going to finish up. Wow. This, uh, these upgrade advantages are crazy. I mean, Goody's only got his plus one on the way, and that's going to be a big factor throughout this game. The, t pro t uh, the Protoss army going to be so much more heavily upgraded than the Terran. And uh, a few Marines moving down the south side just to take some map control. Do you see the army moving down here, but uh, there's not really too much he has to do uh, about this. I mean, he just kind of sits in the siege line he's already established for himself. Fourth Orbital Command does come up here. Hellion run by though into the third base. This is pretty bad for Sionic. You're going to lose a significant number of his workers. It's actually going to force a complete recall out of his opponent. And already the 24 workers have been killed. So maybe a little bit of an uh, overreaction there by Sionic, I feel. I mean, 
recalling your whole army to deal with four Hellions. I think that's maybe a bit excessive. And look at this. Good, he's moving out. He is uh, going for the attack. He's actually on 200 supply against 145. Now, you've got to remember, he does not have the same upgrades as his opponents. And the upgrades are going to make a big, big difference in any kind of fight which we see. Plus one is only just going to finish for Goody in, in the next few seconds. His plus one vehicle plating is still only about halfway done as well. Psionic, look at this. He knows he doesn't want to take a fight right now. He's going to force Goody to turn around and come back. Of course, once Goody gets sieged up, his army becomes so, so strong. Oh no, the Colossi getting caught in the back and one of them is going to go down immediately. The Mothership Corps has already died as well. And this number of Vikings, he's not covering his Colossi well enough with the Stalkers. And two now have gone down. These two Phoenixes are going to go down as well. And three Colossi, four Colossi down. Psionic just has nothing left. Left and Goody doesn't even need to see Jumpy, I don't think. He's just going to keep on moving through. Psionic, what was his game plan here? I mean, he made these st extra Stargates. He never used them. He's invested in the Temple Archives, which was delayed because of them Stargates. And that may have been the difference here if he maybe had some more Archons. He was moving around the map. He was never really in position to defend his Colossi. And he that allowed these Vikings to pick them off. And now he's going for a bit of a counterattack with a lot of Stalkers. But what does it even matter? I mean, he's going to lose the whole of his own base. And uh, Goody, yeah, he's got uh, plenty of defences back at home. Now, he is going to lose all of this, but again, he can send some of his army home if he wants to. He is doing just as much, if not more, damage than his opponent at uh, on this side of the map. As it stands, as these few Stalkers uh, will do what they can, blinking now up to the uh, natural. Going to try and help out just a little bit. Cloak's about to finish for these Banshees, but this one gets picked off just before... Uh, it does finish. Now there is a uh, cloak here now. I've never blink forward. This Banshee is going to slowly start picking off these Dorcas. The natural under attack for Psionic. Losing his uh, Temple Archives in a couple of gateways. They have the third base as well, which has already gone down. Banshee continues to kill Stalkers here. One kill on it so far. So SCVs are being taken down at the same time. Goody has so much money though. So many minerals at least. And he's making three uh, Banshees at a time. Psionic can try and re-expand on his own side of the map. But I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. These siege tanks on the uh, low ground here going to just uh, provide the backup needed to really push into this main base. Not that there's actually anything here, but I mean, Goody just continuing to push forward. And these stores just doing what they can. I mean, they're trading fairly well. Some Tempers and an Immortals actually joined up with the Stalkers as well. So in a full-on base trade situation, but Terran is just so much better in this kind of situation, of course. Uh, he's even built a planetary fortress. <laughs> oh, Goody, he's got a planetary fortress which he can just sit and repair and... That's just something else which is a bone can't really kill and there's no way Sionic can push up this ramp even with Cloak Banshees he isn't even an observer while well, there is one with the army. As Goody still just continues to decimate the main and Sionic thinking about how does he even do this anymore. He's uh, going to go for this uh, planetary force I su assume he's going to just have to storm these way. Oh he gets the force fields on the workers so I mean a small victory for him right here. Did he just lose the observer? Oh he's lost the observer. Storm comes down on these workers but losing the observer means Banshees just have free reign. Free reign. And now there's no way at all Goody can lose this game if there was any doubt in your minds already for whatever reason. Now it's uh, definitely not going to be in Psionic. Continues to kill supply depots here again. He just can't break the main base. There's just too many tanks here. There's too many, I mean, again, Banshees which you can't even detect having lost that observer. And Psionic going to move down, bend to the middle map. Is he going to try and just trade against this army? I mean, maybe his best bet would be to just slowly try and pick away at everything with the Blink Stalkers. But again, I think Goody's just going to play this nice and slowly. As he uh, cleans out this Temple Archives, he's going to clean out this system there. Uh, does he see this pylon? I'm pretty sure he must have seen this pylon at some point. Yes, he knows this pylon is here as well. Currently just scanning with his uh, one orbital command. He's going to be uh, looking to hunt down this base in the near future. And that base is over here. So that's exactly what Goody wants to know, where that base is. I'm surprised he isn't sending a single cloak to Banshee just around the map just to try and spot to see where exactly everything is, to see where his opponent is hiding the buildings. It looks as though he is confident enough now to move down his ramp though, and again, this is a scary army on its own. Never mind the fact he's already got a bunch of stuff over here. Single Viking gonna kill off this pylon nice and slowly as a marine checks in the main base for any uh, kind of uh, buildings. Now uh, Banshee now does cloak up, he's going to go for the scout around and spots these stalkers. Uh, he's going to run straight into this base in just a couple of moments and again there's no detection on the map for Psionic and again this, this cloak Banshee is just going to shut down the game for him so Goody here going to even up this series 1 to 1 now in this best of 7 again, best of 7 all kill clan war. 
Important match for both teams. ESC looking to stay at the top of the table with a victory here today against All Authority. Looking to basically take it over ESC and put themselves at the top of the table. As uh, Goody's even going to re-expand down to his natural right now. Stalkers and uh, everything is going to come in and try and fight this army on the low ground here. Storm's going down. The first two storms aren't really that effective. The next two storms are. Psionic loses all of his tempers though and... Well, I mean, is he even going to be able to clean up the rest of this? I don't know. A few Vikings, a few tanks remain. It looks as though... It looks as though Goody's actually going to kill the whole army just with what's here and... That's going to be good game called and Goody takes map number two to take us to a... Let's move this webcam, this has been annoying me. To take us to a 1-1 one -one situation now and again in this best of seven which I've just mentioned. So 1-1 one -one right now against all authority, going to be picking the next player. We're going to be uh, finding out who that's going to be in the next few moments time. Thank you Armand for saying good cast in the chat, it's a pleasure to be here cast for you guys. I am Wardy, I run everything SE to improve. And uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, guys. So in the meantime, if you're enjoying the show, please do make sure to hit that follow button and uh, come back and watch us again when we're live in the future. We've been live every day for the last few days. I'm not sure when we're going to be live next. It may be tomorrow. It may be Tuesday. It depends when matches are organized for. But we're just going to take a quick commercial and then we'll be back with game number three of ESC versus against all authority. Guys, don't stray too far because Goody goes up against another. So there we are going back into game right now. It is game number three and our next player up from against all authority is going to be Minimaf. So I reckon one of their stronger players here actually. Um, if I'm not mistaken, did he make it to WCS Challenger League this season? I think he... did he? Yeah, he did, right? I'm pretty sure he did. And then he... Um Usually play in Challenger League, mini math, mini math. I I know this as well. I do know this. I think he played against a. I think he played because he played 4GG on like the first day. Maybe right. Well, I'm pretty sure this guy played it to Challenger League this season. So let's get in the game and introduce him. In the upper left hand corner is going to be the Green Zerg player from Against All Authority. It's mini math. Again, I feel one of their stronger players in the team right now. Uh, definitely good against one of the stronger players from ESC though. And that is of course this purple Terran player in the upper right hand corner here. Goody showcasing us some brilliant mech play in game number 2 just there. If you missed game number 1 it was Psionic taking down Ares in a PVZ on Overgrowth. A uh, early push out with a four, uh, bunch of sentries. Killed off the third of Ares. Ares with the counter attack was doing some good damage but overcommitted just a bit too much. And that was enough to allow Psionic to just tech up and uh, take the game from there. Of course, then game number two is Goody, bringing it back for that mech game. And now here we are in game number three with a TVZ on Frost. Minimaf versus Goody. This is a pretty sick matchup, I feel. Um, if I am correct in thinking it was Minimaf versus 4GG, I mean, 4GG free owed Minimaf, but still, I mean, 4GG is an incredible player. Who can, uh, I don't think anyone is going to doubt that. So I'm sure he's Minimaf, he will have a lot to show us as he has opened for Hatch first into a pool. And uh, this could be a long one, of course. We are talking about Goody. And uh, that means we could see some pretty long games here today in this best of seven if he goes the whole distance. And uh, this one itself on Frost. In, in these kind of positions too, I mean, I think any position on Frost really opens you up to being able to just slowly push and end up bashing your head against uh, swarm hosts. So... Let's see what happens. Let's see if, I mean, Goody taking the double gas now after a uh, gasless expand once again. It looks as though he is going to be playing mech again in uh, in this game. And I mean, I don't think anyone is going to be too uh, too surprised by that. Bunker coming up at the front, and uh, Goody just again set in this game. His uh, factory does now come down. He's going to build up a reactor. He's just going to be a very standard opening, but of course, with this double gas, he's going to have a lot of income in the gas department, and that's going to be so that he can most likely go for a. What's he going to go for? I guess he's probably going to go Hellion Banshee. I mean, he doesn't have to. He could just go for Blue Flame opening, for example. There's definitely a few different openings he could go for here, so we'll see which he opts to uh, choose and a very fast third base just coming out of mini math uh, probably feeling as though there's not much to be too scared of early on he has got his metabolic boost on the way so he will have these zerglings out to be able to uh, you know fight across the map with etc etc 
uh, fight across the map with a terrible way of phrasing things. To, uh, you know, when the first few Hellions come out for goodie, it's very important to have this metaboric boost so that if Hellions try and run by, his Zergans can react very quickly so that they can split very quickly so they can get in and get us around very quickly if the opportunity arises. So this uh, speed is very important in terms of that. Uh, first two Hellions only just on the way right now and there is the Starport. So it's going to be Hellion Banshee to start things off. We'll see the third base most likely coming down in the near future after this. I like this as well, uh, moving from his barracks down to the low ground. He knows he's not going to be playing, uh, using this at all. He knows he's going to be playing mech, so why not just use it for something? And that something here is going to be putting this down in position and uh, just letting it kind of take away some of the surface area from this bunker. It gives him a lot of kind of defense against all ins actually and makes this first bunker actually so much more reliable whereas usually it's going to die in a matter of seconds as the first bin is just all crashing at the same time for example. So nice little use of the barracks here when he knows he's not going to be needing it and right now we see these Hellions moving across the map and uh, looking as though they're going to stop it on a little bit of light pressure. Uh, going to maybe, we'll maybe be able to pick up creep tumor here, trade some health with uh, Queen not too much. There's uh, actually only a single Zergling out, so no, there's the rest of the Zerglings. Alright, so there's a few Zerglings out, and this is enough, of course, to push these Hellions back. You know, he doesn't want to go across the map chasing these down. He just wants to sit on the edge of his creep here, maybe split them up, and if the Hellions try and come too far forward, then it's his time to pounce a single Queen, unfortunately, left to kill these rocks on its own. As uh, our first Banshee has just popped out here for goodies, so he's going to start moving across the map with this. Looks as though Minimaf well prepared, though. He's got his first spore crawler and second spore crawler on the way down. Uh, pretty well positioned as well. I like it. He's kind of, kind of just covering entrance paths. So a banshee comes in here. It pretty much can't. A banshee comes in this way. It can't really. And uh, just going to use them to kind of zone out the banshee. He's actually already got one in his main base, which I missed going up beforehand. So a little bit of uh, you can have to excuse me for that. These hellions coming in though. They're going to get themselves a queen and these workers, which are building here. And uh, quite important to note as well that this spore crawler could definitely be a target to go down as well. These uh, drones are still left alive until just now. Uh, Banshee coming a bit too far forward, comes in range of the queens and the spore crawler. Spore crawler does actually finish up and roaches are out so this is going to start getting cleaned up much more easily. And uh, in the end Minimaf with Transfuse will push this back without too much trouble at all. As uh, this Banshee comes in range of the spore crawler here and the queens Fighting that back once again. So pretty even so far. No real player making uh, any huge moves here. Goody trying to be aggressive, but again shut down by Minimaf. Taking his third base behind us and adding on a bunch of factories as well. And look at this eventual Sax upgrade from Minimaf. He's going to go for the Roach drops here very early on in this game. So we're going to look to try and shut down Goody before he can even get started. And we'll see how effective this is going to be. We see four Hellions sent, being sent off down to the south side of the map. Going to look to go for an attack from the left hand side of the third base. Try and dro uh, roast some drones in there. While the roaches are a bit out of position. Are there any drones even at the third base right now? I don't think there are. Okay, a few just popped out. If you could kill these five workers, that'd be pretty nice. You know, of course, with playing mech, he can be a lot more aggressive with his Hellions. It's not so important if he loses them because... The road because uh, he's going to be making more. You know, it's not like when you play Bion, you need to keep these Hellions alive because they're your only Hellions and you need them to hold your third base. He's going to be making more Hellions, so you can afford to lose a couple here and grab a couple more work kills. Ace in total now in this game as Pneumatized Carapace comes up as well. So we're going to have Ventral Sacks and Pneumatized Carapace. This Roach drop is beginning to build up. We have five Overlords on the way as well, and we should see a huge influx of Roaches very soon with 601k banked for mini math. Goody, I mean, what's he building right now? Four tanks at a time. He's got a couple of... Uh, has he got one Banshee? Three Banshees out. Okay, so these Banshees are going to be a big, big help. I mean, MVP was the first kind of player we saw going for the big Banshee plays in TVZ when he played Mech. And it's so useful against actually a big drop play because when you drop in, the idea is you kill everything. But if these Banshees add so much DPS from the air, you can't kill them off and you will end up losing all the Roaches. And look at how well prepared Goody is. He's got... A Mine at the front, he's adding on a turret as well. So he's got pretty good coverage of uh, the entrance into where his army is going to be. So uh, with some Hellbats as well and some more Hellions coming out, I'm feeling fairly confident for Goody right now actually that he might be able to hold this. The Overlords are now on the way, they're going to be coming here. These first roaches getting turned around pretty quickly by these tanks sieged on the high ground. Another turret coming down as well. And uh, here we go, the roaches being picked up. It's not that scary a number of roaches, only six Overlords worth. And it's going to come in right now. Again, there's already a turret here, though. The Overseer are going to tank the hits on this. But uh, Goody knows what's up and immediately just get in position. These Roaches drop into the Hellbats and it's not going to do anything at all. They're going to pick off a few of these tanks. But uh, really, I mean, it's not going to do the kind of game-ending damage you would have been looking to do here. 
And that is cleaned up very, very easy for Goody. He does, however, reset the tank count, which is uh, something to uh, think about. Which is something to, which is something worthwhile thinking about. Resetting the tank count is always going to be important. We actually see a couple of fours coming in right now, uh, as we see a Hydra stand and an Infestation pit coming down. So we're probably going to see any math here transition into Roach Hydra, and I, I'd assume Roach Hydra it, Swarm Host in the end. I'd be surprised to see him go Infestors before any Swarm Hosts here, as. Um, we see a scan coming down to uh, see them roaches on the high ground. A few banshees and uh, hellbats in position though. And oh, we're going to see a bit of a roach run by. This is pretty nice, but a couple of fours uh, are nearby and nearby enough to pretty much just stop these roaches from doing too much. And four will go down. But still, uh, not so much damage going to be done by these roaches. They get into the middle line. They're going to kill off a few workers here and are still attacking at the high ground here as well. A single tank is uh, covering that, but having to keep using scans to. Uh, stop it from occurring so that's a little bit annoying the banshee is here now and that will help out with that high ground vision and that'll be enough to finally turn this around but 18 workers killed not so bad actually by minimath he uh, takes himself an 11 worker lead as he starts to establish a fourth base down to this south hand side and uh, hydra's on the way he's going for a hive all right well i was completely wrong he's going to go for roach and uh, roach hydra and uh, viper here to at least uh, be his starting composition in this game, so he's going to look to throw blinding clouds down and attack in with his Roach Hydra. I'm not sure how successful this is going to be, though. Goody, he's already making some Vikings, which are very important to be able to kind of deter the Vipers from coming too far forward. And his tanks, you know, he's not going to look to move out to a fourth base too quickly either, so his tanks are going to already be in a pretty well spread, uh, you know, position. And in this kind of position, it's very hard to cover all of the tanks with the blinding cloud. So, I'm not sure how effective this is really going to be right now. As we see a few Hellions just moving around, scouting around for Goody. He's going to find his fourth base in a few moments. And the creep for Minimath also continuing to spread across the map, which is going to be very important for him. It will slow down any kind of mech push. And if he does decide to go Swarm Host at some point as well, it's going to be very useful. Uh, just so that he's uh, going to have a lot of more kind of places to put his swarm so he can extend further forward with them and still be safe with it. Hellions are found by these roaches so they're going to be shut down. In fact one of them dies and the other two get away. So uh, nice reactions there by Goody pulling away in plenty of time. And uh, again uh, coming in from the side to pick off one of more of these Hellions. So one Hellion remains down here. Uh, a bit of a road shop actually coming into this natural expansion. This is uh, pretty cute. Utilizing that up this upgrade even later in the game to, conti to continue killing off some workers here. And uh, Minimath continued to do good economic damage so far. What is that now? 25 workers killed throughout the game. So, again, I mean, Goody's, you know, he's staying on point. He's still got three orbitals. He's got a fourth command center. Probably about to flow out over here as well. But he's rebuilding his SCVs. But Minimath is forcing him to do this. And again, they could be. I guess it's only minerals, but it's still nice to be doing it. It's fairly cheap for him to do it as well. I mean, four roaches and one overlord isn't very uh, expensive by any stretch of the imagination. So. We do see Goody and starting to move out and starting to cover a little bit larger of a span with his uh, units here. As his first uh, <laughs> Minimaf actually kills his extractor with a Viper. Three Vipers here are going to be able to uh, start coming around and uh, abducting. Maybe throwing down some blinding clouds as well depending on what they want to, uh, how he feels the energy is going to be best utilized. And again, I still really feel like he needs some kind of backup to this. You know, it's kind of cool seeing them go for this initially. But after this fails once, I think he needs some kind of backup. And fortunately, he does have the infestation pit down for his tech to hive. Is this going to work out? I mean, these tanks are a little bit more clumped now. But again, these Vikings uh, are kind of, ah, well, a bit out of position to defend these tanks to the left. And here come the blinding clouds. And this is going to be a pretty big fight. A lot of these tanks not really able to do too much. And Goody doesn't have that much DPS here. But Minimath is just getting his army absolutely murdered. And the blinding clouds just didn't matter. I believe most of the Vipers went down as well. And he remaxes on Roach Hydra once again. With the remax, the supplies kind of come fairly even. But, uh, again, he lost his Vipers, only one of them remaining on fairly low HP as well. So he can't really go for another attack, you know. He can't justify that at all. A Roach attack coming into this high ground once again. And just continuing to be annoying there. Continuing to rack up them workers. 41 workers killed now. It's pretty decent. However, a bunch of Hellbats are coming down to this south side. Minimaf should be able to clean this up. He's got a few, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hydralisks nearby. However, it's just a distraction as Goody begins to move through the middle of the map. 
And moving through the middle of the map is scary. He's cleaned out a lot of this creep. He's actually pretty much on the third base of his opponent. And this is a scary time for Minimap. He needs to think about when he wants to move forward. It's actually going to be right now as soon as possible, basically. A huge blinding cloud comes down. And this is a huge blinding cloud. It's on top of a lot of these tanks. And it will allow him to clean this up. And that was the blinding cloud he needed just then. And now he's going to launch a counterattack of his own across the map. He's going to catch a couple of these tanks which were moving forward as well. Goody has to turn around to basically just fight now. He's got no other option. And uh, after losing his two tanks, Minimaf will turn around. Okay, he's just going for a couple of reinforcements. He's going to go once again. I'm not sure how much further forward he can push. Hellbats are going to be pretty effective against the Hydras. They don't have too much to tank for them. It looks as though these roaches on the high ground were doing a lot more damage once again. The tank actually goes down here. And this may be a base kill for Minimaf as he's coming in in the middle line. Uh, Hellbats coming in from behind as well. He's just actually going to trade against the army, it would seem. But he killed off all of the SCVs down here. And Goody now on 41 SCVs. His economy has been absolutely screwed scratched. Vikings landing to try and help clean this up. A couple of tanks are sieging up but it might just be a bit too late as he's continuing to take a lot of damage here and, uh, and one more tank may go down. Can these Vikings save it in time? It looks as though no it cannot. So another tank down here for Goody, but Minimaf, he's uh, actually losing a lot of uh, workers himself. He's got five, six Hellbats, seven Hellbats even in his uh, third base, and that's going to not even kill the workers here, but also kill the hatchery. They've already killed this fourth base as well during this attack from himself, so Goody doing a massive amount of damage on the other side of the map as well. is going to keep this game very, very even, in the, uh, very, very in the balance, I guess. 44 drones, 41 SCVs. Yes, there's mules available. And uh, actually, Minimaf's in a bit of trouble because... Goody has four bases he can still mine from, four locations he can still mine from, whereas Minimaf, he's uh, mined out completely in his main. His natural is pretty much on the same level as Goody's main, but he's only got this base right here where he can mine from right now. He's not really got any mining bases, and he can't afford to make another one either. He can't afford another hatchery right now, and this is scary, scary times for Minimaf. What does he do? Does he make an army because he needs knows in the near future he needs to fight, or does he invest in this hatchery for the long term and hope Goody doesn't push? I think he might be better off just hoping Goody doesn't push because I think after seeing with these roaches, these num this number of tanks, how does he ever f expect to really uh, fight in there? And there is a hatchery going to come down, so he is just going to expand. He is just going to play this slow. You know, something I'd love to see is maybe lift up these hydras into the overlords, drop in the main base. What is the defending in the main base right now? Absolutely nothing. And uh, hydras in the main could shut down a lot of this production. And that could be one way to do some damage here for Minimaf. Damage which he's really been struggling to do in this game so far. I mean, so far, what's he achieved? I mean, he took one really good fight in the middle. He did some damage at the third base, but took a lot of damage on his own economy at the same time. He needs a way to do some solid damage that is just him doing damage and not taking damage at the same time. Because Goody is starting to rise up in supply again. He's already 20 SCVs up. And uh, things are gonna, just going to look very scary here very soon. Vikings are going to uh, come in position here to once again give a bit of high ground vision as the tank siege up. Minimaf not going to stick around too long knowing that Goody will be getting into position. Uh, Hellion run by going to be coming towards this third base. And this is huge right now. Minimaf doesn't have that many drones and losing even a couple here is going to hurt him once again. And Goody's actually pushing forward. He wants to take control of this high ground and he's going to get control of this high ground. Oh, but he's not sieged up. And is this going to be enough? The Hellbats are here. A few SCVs here as well. The Hellbats are going to die, but the Hellbats tank long enough for the siege tanks to siege up. And that's going to be enough time to get it. And that's going to land to be in this position. And now Minimaf has to abandon this base. He cannot realistically try and uh, take this location back. And now he has to just mine from down here once again as well. So supplies are still fairly even, but Minimaf really not uh, finding a way to be able to push forward and fight. And really struggling in terms of his number of bases. As another base, this base will 100% get end up getting shelled down here, and uh, well, Broodlings are going to come in and end up chasing this uh, these tanks away. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure these tanks didn't run away just because of the Broodlings. But well, I mean, Minimaf going to come in for another fight here, thinking about maybe Goody doesn't have uh, anything in position. But I mean, yes, he does. Oh, this might be a good opportunity for him. These tanks don't have anything to really tank for him. He's going to get right up close and on top of them. If he moves forward, oh, blinding cloud comes down, so that's okay. He's going to be able to trade pretty well here, and this is the kind of fight he needs right now. And he needs to shut down one of these bases. I feel. Uh, I guess this base isn't really being mined from too much, but it's better than shutting down nothing. And he's actually just going to commit his units forward here. So Minimap for a big move now does take an army supply advantage and kills off this command center as well. That's one less mule being dropped every 50 seconds. There's still a single tank over here, and uh, a few roaches are going to come in to just clean this up. 
So, um, Goody losing a little bit more supply, but another Hellion run by him. What's in position? Absolutely nothing. The drones are going to go down. Oh, no, this is pretty much all of the economy right now for Minimap, and his drones are desperately trying to retreat to the army, and, oh, Minimap taking even more damage here from another Hellion run by a couple of spine cores is all is that is needed to really shut this down. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Hellbat comes in. The Hellbat's going to do even more damage here. And, oh, it's only going to get a couple more workers, but, nah, but uh, what? 85 workers killed for Minimap, 63 killed for Goody. And they're both even on supply right now. What is this game? Minimath needs to drone up. And he, I also think he maybe needs to... F f I guess he doesn't even have enough drones to think about taking another base. I guess that's not too much of a worry for him. As he does actually just hold the mid middle of the map right now. He holds that watchtower. The creep spread is uh, still looking pretty strong for him as well. Uh, the creep spread is actually really nice. It's going to, again, if Judy wants to really commit to a forward attack, it's going to give him a lot of warning about it and a lot of time to react to it. And it's maybe even going to stop Goody just going for an attack at all until he cleans it up. So having re-established this creep spread after the first push from Goody has been a really uh, crucial factor, I feel, so far in this game. Oh, but Cloak Banshee just going to do even more work damage here. And it's, again, losing mining time is stuff is a li are little things that Minimaf can't really afford right now. What are the resources lost? Like, Zerg player has been trading less efficiently than the, uh, Terran. He's looking as though he wants to retake this base over here right now. Goody, is, uh, his Banshee may just uh, fly over this uh, drone. And uh, Minimaf actually pulling that drone back to just start mining again. Uh-oh. Banshee uh, turns away just at the last moment there. And does stay alive. I mean, Minimaf, this is the kind of game right now where if he was able to get Swarm Hosts up, it would, or if he'd had a few swarm hosts up already, with the damage he'd done, it'd be really good for him because he would have started trading so so efficiently. But uh, I mean, with the economy he has right now, he definitely can't afford to commit to them. He's, uh, you know, he'd need a significant number to really keep these uh, tank waves back. I'm just worried. I mean, how does he hold off a big push from Goody? I mean, he's done it a couple of times so far. Does he have any vipers out? Yes, he's got three, and they are sitting back here. A couple of them don't have uh, as much energy as they could have right now. Couple Hellbats gonna attack down on this base. They're gonna get cleaned up pretty easily. Vikings come over to clean out this overlord. And again, Goody has taken the supply lead in the game. He's uh, 40 supply up right now. 10 of that in workers and the rest of it in army. He's also had an upgrade lead, something I've not really mentioned uh, as the game has gone on. Goody's been at 2-2 for quite some time against 2-1 uh, for the Zerg player. And considering you got this very fast hive, I think one of the things that you can do with very quick fiber rushes is really utilize the fact you can get your plus three much earlier than you do in other games. So uh, a little bit surprised not to see that coming down, but of course these guys have been trading pretty heavily for a lot of the game, and maybe it just feels like he hasn't had the time to, uh, you know, purchase those upgrades and continue upgrading at all. All right, well, Goody pushing across the map here, and I mean this creep does slow him up a little bit. It did allow uh, Minimap to force a siege. Just for a couple of moments here, Sporkle is going to go down, more roaches, more hydras being produced as uh, we see a bunch of tanks being uh, sieged up and uh, the push into this, what was the, I guess the original third base, is coming down. This is really important to kind of shut down because if these Hellbats kill off too many of these workers, Minimap is going to be in trouble once again in terms of his economy. Oh, I like this, a big counter-attack coming down from Minimap. There's only two, okay, there's a lot more than two tanks here, only two sieged up though right now. And uh, he's going to take a full advantage of this. Kills off these two tanks, gets out of there. And a uh, nice little counterattack, but it doesn't deter Goody from sitting here with this army. A couple of Hellions clean up the drones, which are over here as well. Five and four kills on both of those. And tanks are slowly pushing forward as well here. And oh no, the Vipers! Two of them go down before Blind Clouds come down. And now one Blind Cloud comes down, but only on two of the tanks and Minimap. Oh, uh, this game. He's going to lose absolutely everything. He's not going to be able to hold on any longer in the game. And uh, this is going to be game over, I think. I mean, 46 supply against 160. G is called. And Goody takes a second map in a row. And uh, against all authority, maybe going to start sweating right now. As uh, ESC take the lead for the first time in this best of seven all kill. Alright, so we're going to get into game uh, map number 4 here and, uh, as, as soon as possible, guys. We'll see if Against All Authority is going to uh, even things up. I'll let you guys know in the chat as soon as I know who the next player will be. But we are going to take a quick commercial break. In the chat, uh, why don't we use Gameheart? Um, because the Gameheart lobby takes a minute or so to set up and sometimes teams just don't really like it. So, sometimes we just don't bother. It's something that I definitely... 
uh, will uh, make more of an effort to do in the future. Alright, so we're going to get into a quick commercial break here, guys. Uh, in the meantime, do go check out our website, sctimprove.net. Find out everything you may want to know about the SCT Improved Team League, when matches are taking place, who's taking part, etc, etc. And we'll be back after this quick commercial break, just a few minutes while we get map number 4 set up and runs into match point in map 5. So can they do it? Currently Goody is playing for them and their next opponent is going to be Blitztow. A uh, Terran player, in fact from against all authorities. So we've got ourselves a TVT here. Are we going to see mech? Well, I kind of guess we will if it goes long enough. Spawning on merry-go-round, the three-player map in the map pool, of course, right now in the upper left-hand corner, the kind of 10 o'clock position, the blue Terran player representing against all authority. Can he stop the streak of his opponent? It is Blitztow. And uh, in the lower left-hand corner, called the Foreign Hope by Mustang Swagger in the chat. The Green Terran player. It is ESC Gaming's Goody on a two win streak right now. Can he make it free here by taking down his Terran opponent? Let us see. So, slight differences already here. Goody with the uh, 14 gas after his barracks and uh, gas first coming up for Blitztow. So, Blitztow immediately looking as though he's going to be the more aggressive player in this uh, map. On this map. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what exactly he wants to do. I mean, more li more often than not, uh, gas first openings almost always lead to Banshees. Uh, unless it's some kind of very aggressive Hellion drop. We'll see when he wants to take a second gas. And see when Goody wants to take a second gas as well. Is he just looking to expand here early on? He's opened up with a Marine. Which will be able to start chasing down this SCV, but not before it uh, scouts around a little bit. Uh, in fact, the SCV doesn't see too much at all, but he's, he sees the timing of this Marine, and that timing of the Marine means he knows it wasn't a gas first, which is one of the more important things he wants to know right now, and it's probably actually better for him to keep this SCV alive. Uh, Goody with his SCV, he scouted the wrong location first, unfortunately, and uh, this SCV will come up here. He's going to come in, and he uh, will identify a gas first after seeing the speed of this factory, and uh, most importantly, he's actually going to see the second gas coming down as well. So he sees the second gas timing from his opponent, this tells him a lot about uh, what exactly this uh, kind of build will be. So second gas down, and uh, that will uh, mean that Blitzstar is going to be very aggressive over this one base here. Probably the Cloak Banshee in the near future, I suppose. He's uh, building in a bit of an lo interesting location. That starport doesn't allow a tech lab to come down on this barracks. He could build on the factory if he would like to. Goody going for a reactor and, a fact and his own factory, of course. Hasn't invested in a second gas just yet, so... Currently we see no second gas, and uh, that's probably because he wants to expand in the very near future. And there is that expansion coming down, so command center down, and that means we're going to be seeing a uh, just a bit more of an ec uh, economic play from Goody as well. So I suppose he's going to make either mines or mines or I guess mines would be the safest, but he could make a Hellions as well, and he's going to make mines. So he's just going for kind of a defensive 1 1 1 to start him off here. We've actually seen a Raven out of Blitztow. Interesting. He's also starting up a uh, tech lab on his factory as well. So he's going to go into siege tank production too. And I wonder if we see some kind of maybe really interesting kind of early push with uh, a Raven and some tanks across the map and try and uh, just try and do some very early damage. Five Marines sitting at the top of his ramp. <coughs> Rob Sunu, Goody, our Panzer General. Cheers for Goody coming down in the chat. A lot of uh, Goody fans in the chat would seem. A Viking coming out next here from Blitztown, so they've been very, very safe. And uh, what's going on over here? Well, Goody's just investing in his first Viking as well, in case he is going to go end up going up against a Banshee. And there's that command center for Blitztown. So, Blitztown, he's invested in much faster kind of defenses here with this uh, siege tank and the Raven. I wonder if he's going to try and make use of that when he, if he identifies that Goody has gone for faster expand himself, and he does scan now, so he sees this orbital command, he knows it's faster. Does this uh, instigate a move out from him, or does he just sit tight and say, "Well, I'm going to cut my losses. I'm going to have a bit of a tank lead here as we uh, hit a bit of a lag spike." Uh, he might just say, "I've got a bit of a uh, a tank lead here. Am I going to just uh, sit back and uh, let this take advantage in the long run?" Or are we just going to, uh, you know, what else is going to happen? 
Uh, what else am I going to do? So we've got a bit of a lag spike here. And we're waiting for this to uh, resolve before we can uh, get back into this game. It looks as though he might drop completely right now. Okay, he's back and he's uh, paused the game. And uh, we look as though we might get back into this game in just a couple of moments, guys. So. Yep, looks as though we're uh, going to start up here in just a couple of moments once again, just uh, waiting for the go, and there we have it. So, we're back in game, let's take this screen off and go back into the game. So we've got Viking and a Raven out already, uh, sitting overhead in Blitz Tower's uh, main base. And uh, Goody, he's uh, going for a uh, Raven himself here, I would assume. As he uh, drops this down, and there's that Raven coming out. Raven, a key part of the uh, mech composition, as he actually uh, builds, a, puts his barracks down on the reactor. So, gonna add on a few more marines here. Again, could just be for some anti air, could just be to waste some minerals before he adds on factories a bit later on. Pretty interesting, though, to uh, open four Hellions and then drop this barrack stack down here and go back into marine production. So, let's see what exactly he wants to do with this. Uh, you know, even when you play a mech, the uh, marines can sometimes be just a little bit extra to help defend against things, and especially against a push like this, this is exactly what we're talking about. A few extra marines can definitely make the difference between pushing this back and not. First tank on the way here for Goody, of course, the first tank already, uh, first two tanks are on the other side of the map now for Blitz Towers. He looks as though he's going to keep on moving through. He scans on the uh, natural. He sees Vikings, Hellions, and Marines moving forward here, and he's he going to siege up. He's going to push a bit further forward first. He's going to push all the way onto the ramp. He's just out of range. He throws down some auto turrets as well. And this is going to be a uh, pretty uh, soft contain to start things off here by Blitz Tower. You actually on Sieges, he's going to move a little bit further forward as the fight starts to uh, take place. And now he's only got his two tanks and a single marine here. So maybe being a little bit overzealous in terms of uh, <coughs> how quickly he unseaged his tanks there. And they're uh, goody going to actually force this back simply because of killing off all of the rest of the marines here and he's going to be able to reland his third bit uh, his natural expansion pretty quickly let's start turning around he's got three tanks here now a couple of uh, vikings the raven and the medevac handful more marines are coming across the map too he's actually going to load up a couple of tanks and marines into the uh, medevac he's going to go for a drop into the main base but uh, we actually see goody moving forward and uh, hunter seeker missile coming forward oh, he actually drops the tank in the forward location but the hunter seeker missile still uh, hits and blitz tau being fancy with his micro, but is it going to be enough? I'm not too sure. He's uh, trying to get out of here. He loses one more tank. He's going to have to go all the way back home, where he does have a pretty decent advantage for himself. Six more workers, a little bit behind an army supply, but he should be able to siege up with a tank. He should be able to hold on here without too much of an issue, and uh, he should be able to hold on. However, Goody does have air dominance. He still has his Raven. Uh, he's killed off the Raven of um, Blitztal, and losing that Raven for Blitztal means that it's a little bit uh, sketchy for him. He's not going to have that them PDDs later in the game. And he actually throws down a couple of barracks here. So going to transition himself into bioplay. Already dropping the barracks on a tech lab to start up Stimpak. While well, Goody just falls back for himself. He's got a command center on the way as well. And considering he's uh, playing mech, the speed of this third command center is going to give him a huge, huge, huge advantage here. And uh, Blitztar, what is he going to do about it? Well... I don't know. What is he going to do about it? I mean, he's playing bio, so hopefully he just starts up his own field command center sometime soon. Otherwise, he's going to have to do some major damage at some point. G goody, look at this. The delayed Cloak Banshee as well. Cloak and a second Banshee now on the way. His first already starting to head across the map. This uh, drop is once again going to be attempted by Blitztal. Uh, goody does not spot it on the way across, so he's going to end up with a tank and a handful of Marines in his main base. How effective is this going to be? Uh, tank and the siege is up. The marines are here now as well. And Goody immediately pulls uh, into his main base to start dealing with this. He's going to get himself a turret. He's probably going to get these uh, couple of uh, a deeper if he wants. He's going for the refinery. If he targeted down one or the other, he would actually uh, get something here instead of just a little bit of uh, each one. And uh, this single tank is not. Uh, it's going to kill quite a few marines, which I suppose is nice. But in the end, it's just going to everything's just going to die. Again, if he targeted this depot, he would have got it. If he targeted this refinery with everything, he would have got it. But just uh, a little bit of just, I guess, not really paying attention. As uh, he now in sieges, and he's now going to move out a little bit again. Is he going to go for a push across the map? Where is he scanning? Scanning the natural of his opponent. And looking to uh, 
And I guess looking to just be aggressive, Goody's looking to push out and take his third base though. I mean, this is uh, an orbital command center now, it's ready, his production is starting to rack up. He's starting to put missile turrets in the uh, front. And, oh, Cloak Banshee is going to force uh, Blitz out to just probably turn around here. I mean, he's going to take so much damage just coming across the map. A scan is used, and it's going to turn the Banshee around, but it's not going to kill it off. Goody gets away with this. And this is uh, pretty... Oh, wow, another scan does take that down. But again, two scans to take down a Banshee. Not the most efficient of uh, trades. And it's good he starts uh, sending a couple of Hellions out around the map as well. Going to be looking to check this third base, which isn't there just yet. I mean, Blitz Tower has taken a long, long time to establish his third base. It's only just starting to build right now, which is why, I, I mean, he needs to be aggressive. He needs to find a way to do something here. What upgrades does he have? Well, he's got Stim. So that's pretty nice. He's going to actually go for a drop into the main base here, but the uh, positioning of this tank here for Goody. Should be more than enough to start shutting this down, and here we go. Three tanks are going to drop off, but the medevacs just have to turn around. One of them actually goes down, and Blitztow, another attempt at being aggressive, but it's just going to fall down for him. He's not going to be able to kill off this Banshee, and this Banshee is going to reign supreme. Uh, Marines are going to come in here and try and drop as well now. Blitztow just going to lead to him losing another medevac, and Blitztow just doesn't seem to be making what he wants to make work work. He's just, uh, everything he tries just seems to get shut down so easily, and... Well, uh, he's going to lose uh, absolutely everything here. He's going to lose another uh, tank and uh, Hellions in his natural as well. Doing a little bit of damage. Will get cleaned up. But good, he sits with a 12 worker advantage right now. And puts down, he's still even in army. If he hadn't thrown away all of them units, he'd actually be in a fantastic position right now. I mean, he's just thrown away so much. Resources lost is so much in favor of Goody. And uh, again, he's going to go for another drop. When is he going to give up? I mean, it's not working. Just, just stop. It's not working. It's not going to start working. You know, one tank and four marines. It's not enough to really do damage. Goody's more or less got stuff in position. And this happens all the time, right? This map is so annoying. Like, it, your medevac gets stuck because of the rally points. And it's like, because there's a map here, but there's this invisible wall. It's, uh, it's pretty dumb. It means you have to kind of rally differently just for this map. And uh, Goody should see this coming in here. Marines and tanks do start to drop. He's actually going to get a fair few SCVs in this uh, mineral line, so I guess this isn't actually also bad in the end. He's, uh, I assume, probably going to get himself a depot here as well. Uh, but here we go. Everything's going to get cleaned up once again as this Banshee and a couple of tanks with the Hellbats come forward. Fair base lander for Blitztown in the meantime, though. He is trailing an army supply right now, and he is on his upgrade, so he's going to take an upgrade lead here soon. He's fairly even on SCVs, but again, he's just kind of struggling in an army. You've got to drop also hitting the natural. He's taking down a fair few workers here. There's a lot of them are very clumped up. This tank, 12 worker kills. That's actually 27 workers killed now for Blitztown. This is... Okay, I take it back. The drops did something. They did a lot more damage than I genuinely thought they would. Goody has his third base now established. He really needs to transfer SCVs over there. I guess that's what this chunk of uh, units are, and it is. So finally he transfers some SCVs over here, he really needed that and actually having so many clumped up here before really cost him, he lost a lot of them to that tank. But good, he's beginning to move across the map and uh, both players are scanning. So uh, I mean Blitztown knows this is coming, he needs to siege up, he sees these, uh, he saw these units moving across. Surely he saw these units moving across, now he scans again, he sees they're still here. He needs to uh, scan. He's going to get this Banshee immediately. Goody is just starting to push forward. Uh, PDD comes down. And now the tanks for Blitztow are not in a good position. They're going to get cleaned up very quickly. As uh, tanks for Goody are going to unsiege and keep pushing forward. And this is the problem for Blitztow. The way he's been playing this game. He's been trading very inefficiently throughout. And now he's going to try and keep stutter stepping away. But uh, Goody's just going to slowly set up a siege. He's slowly going to get up a big contain here on his opponent. Not just on the natural, but on the third base too. He's going to shut down the miner. And this is going to spell trouble for Blitztow. He basically has to pull everything and just go for it. And here we go from three angles. SCVs, Marauders, Marines and everything. But it's not going to matter. He tries to split his SCVs, but it's too late. GG called and Blitztow. I thought he was getting back into that game a little bit. But his, his first few drops just weren't as successful as he would have hoped. And uh, that's that was a real, real shame in the end, actually. Um, you know, if them drops the first, if he hadn't lost so much, I think the one drop that which was really bad was when he dropped three tanks in the main base. Because losing that whole army there 
is huge. That, that's three tanks he loses. Imagine he has three more tanks in that siege tank line he just set up. Three more tanks, it's all of a sudden a lot more DPS as good he pushes forward. And he's probably going to lose a lot more of his Hellbats. And once he loses a lot more of his Hellbats, the Marine Marauder stops them siege tanks actually sieging up as close. And that gives them a lot more time to produce. It gives them a lot more time to prepare. And it gives them a lot more time to pick the fight. As well as he's going to pick a better fight. Because he's had more siege tanks to do damage in the first place. So, goody. Um, outplays Blitz Tower there. DNS is next from against all authority. But before we get into that game, guys... We're just going to take a quick commercial break, so don't go too far. We'll be back in literally two minutes. We just need to run a quick few commercials and a message from our sponsor, Zowie Gear. Do you know, go make sure to check them out at zowiegear.com. And we'll be back here in just a few moments' time. So, oh, it's potentially our last map of the evening as ESC have taken it to match point right now against Against All Authority. Uh, excuse me, I've got an itchy face all of a sudden. Um, all right. DNS is the next player from against all authority. Why have you got an I don't know. And it is King Sage on station our map, so let's see what's going to happen here. Can DNS pull this back up? Or is Goody going to get himself the all kill? We're going to find out here as we load on up. We're just waiting for the loading bars to finish. And guys, you'll be very happy to know. We've hosted on Gameheart. Way! Alright, well, let's get this set up. 1 3 right now, the scoreline. DNS, can he pull this back? He needs to win three in a row to take the uh, uh, match for his team. Can he do it? Alright, excuse the timing. He ended up left hand corner from A against all authority. It is DNS! Their ace player, can he do it? Can he take down Goody? And can he take down the two players after that? We'll find out here soon. In the lower right hand corner, it's going to be the purple Terran player representing ESC Gaming. Is he going to be able to do it? Is he going to get himself the all kill? It's Goody. The Panzer General. As many have been calling him in the chat already here today. If you guys are supporting either ESC or against all authority, now is the time to let us know. Because this is going to potentially be your last chance. If Goody takes this match, then it's going to be over. And then there will be nothing left at all. And wouldn't that be sad? Big shout out to everyone who's uh, hitting that follow button on the stream there today. Sean Moulton, Armand, Generali, and Keith Logout. Thank you guys for hitting that follow button. Glad to see you guys enjoying the stream. If you do enjoy the stream, hit that follow button. See when we go live again in the future. Again, we're not too sure when we're live again this week. It depends on when the SC2 ITL matches get organised. We're probably going to try and go live tomorrow if we can find a match. It all depends on the organisation of the teams, though. If the teams don't have any matches being played, we can't stream anything. So, all right. Here we are in uh, the match point match. Goody is. Uh, Opening with a Reaper, it would seem. So Reaper expand from Goody, something a little bit different. Checks the back of his natural as well here, just to make sure nothing is uh, nothing is in place. And he's uh, going to move across and uh, just try and find out what exactly DNS is up to. DNS so far. Starting his wall off here, actually, this is really nice, a little small thing to you consider. Uh, if you're a Protoss player, always try and uh, find ways to wall off because this is going to deny any kind of Reaper. If a Reaper comes this way, it's going to get stuck. If a Reaper comes this way, it can't really get behind this mineral line so easily. So, walling off SimCity, very important as a Protoss player. That's good, he just come in here and scout. He's going to see, uh, again, double gas. Exactly what he scouted in his earlier TVP. Double gas. And he's actually going to see through on this gas here. So, could be a bit of an aggressive opening out of DNS. He doesn't have any probe on the map just yet, so can't quite tell. Uh, we do have this uh, Reaper on the way across now, so Reaper is going to be looking to try and do some damage. As it uh, comes over here. And uh, jumps up. Maybe not, uh, I should have rephrased myself, it's not going to try and do some damage. It's been nice if it can do some damage, but of course the main thing for it is just going to be to scout. And Right now, what can it scout? Well, there's actually nothing for it to scout, but he sees that uh, um, gases are still mining quite heavily. Doesn't see any kind of expansion just yet either, but DNS is building up the minerals, looking as though he's going to take that. And in fact, he's going to take that right now. So an expansion coming down from him again. He's got a lot of gas banked up, so his tech will come down very quickly after this. And that will kind of dictate exactly what he wants to do in this game. 
Or, like, or at least how he wants to open Goody. Going to be getting aggressive himself, it would seem, after this reactor slash Reaper into reactor expand. He's uh, following up with a factory, and this is very likely to be for some kind of Hellion drop, if not Mind drop. So, uh, again, this is a way for him to transition into Mech a little bit slower. He might even not go for a drop. He's actually already added on a second gas here, so... You know, there's a multitude of options he could go for, and we'll see how aggressive he does want to be, as we actually just see the Rover facility coming out for DNS, which would suggest just a bit of a safer play from him. Just going to get an observer out, see what his opponent is up to, and from there, just take it as it comes, you know, decide what he wants to do, and uh, see what happens. Forge comes down. And uh, that's a very standard open, of course, the Robo plus the Forge. Forge you can use for cannons if uh, any kind of mine drop does come, which it does look likely as uh, we see a mine in production as well as that starport. And of course you can uh, just start your upgrades nice and early as well, start getting that important upgrade lead that a lot of Protoss players do rely on to really uh, make that uh, end game on if they're so, so strong and hit some timings with the early upgrades. So. Tech Lab coming down on this factory, so maybe it's not going to be a drop at all. Maybe it's just going to be a very quick tank. In fact, this could be the exact same build that we saw beforehand. Um, only done ever so slightly different, you know, with the re re Reaper opening instead of the uh, Gasless Expand. Now going into tanks and maybe a Viking or Medvac, and then going for a push. In fact, that looks like exactly what we're going to see here out of Goody. He's a little bit supply blocked as his medevac and his uh, tank is going to build up. So he's just going to go for exactly what he did against Sionic earlier after a bit of a different opening. Going to get his engineering bay down so he can get his turret up. Not really as necessary this time because he's got a lot more marines and he's got this mine out a lot faster. So um, he's also just been poking into the main base here. What exactly has he been able to see? He's seen everything. He's seen the forge, seen the rover facility. He knows what he is playing against and that of course is great information for our Terran player. Alright, so uh, Goody is uh, pulling this Reaper back. It's uh, going to join up with the rest of this army here, which is beginning to move out, spotted by this Observer. Observer's going to follow it across the map a little bit as well. So he knows that's out, and he immediately actually moves out four Stalkers to intercept this first mine. This is actually pretty huge, taking down the mine already, taking down the Reaper. It's a pretty nice start, and he can also control quite well against the Marines as well. So seeing this immediately allows him to start reacting and uh, start doing things like this. Takes down the Reaper now, starts to take down SCV, takes a hit on the Medivac as well, which is important. If you can take that Medivac down, a lot of healing is gone, of course. In fact, all the healing is gone, and that's a big, big factor in this as well. As uh, this tank may get a couple of shots on it as well now, and uh, he's going to lose one Stalker, but he gets the tank, and this makes this just a pure Marine push, and this without Stim or anything is not going to be too effective at all. Another Stalker warped in to just try and help out with this, and Goody just going to have to fall back home soon. His double factory is now on the way, so he's uh, heading into that mech play as we would expect. Phone overcharge coming down to uh, turn the help turn these Marines away. And uh, maybe moving a bit forward with the, a bit too far forward with the Stalkers here, he loses one of them. Okay, he takes down a couple of the Marines and uh, heavily damages a few of the rest of them. Colossus on the way here, plus two and Blink as well, so DNS looking as though he's setting up to get ready uh, to just play the longer game. He's adding on a few extra gateways, it takes him up to six. I wouldn't imagine he'd go for some kind of two base timing, not against a Terran player who he knows is most likely going to start building tanks in the very new... Well, he's already seen he's started to build tanks, so be very surprised if uh, DNS was to do anything like that. There's uh, Goody just moving around. With a dropship here, actually going to look to try and do a little bit of damage. DNS has a observer in position, and you can see he spots it with this observer. Uh, spots that dropship with his observer, and uh, he's not reacting to it, however, so maybe not paying the most of attention to his minimap. And that'll cost him in a couple of moments as this medevac boosts on into his uh, natural, into his maybe his mineral line. So, a little bit of a shame here. He did spot this and uh, now it's in position. And Marine going to deny the probe on the third base as well. So, Goody making some good little moves here. Forced this throw an overcharge out, killing some workers as well. And uh, keeps this medevac alive to use a little bit later on. Third base now cleans out. <laughs> and that means that DNS is going to be able to drop that third base down. Five workers killed. Where are they? It's from the Banshee in the uh, mineral line. And uh, this Banshee continuing to get worker kills here, up to 8 uh, workers killed in total uh, from that harassment and a lag again. 
hopefully that's only going to happen once as uh, we're going to see a photon cannon added on blink being produced uh, going to finish up here in a couple of mo seconds as well so pretty much all together I mean DNS is entered a pretty good position he's a few workers down it's not the end of the world he's going to start with his third base in a moment this uh, Banshee is back actually going to be able to pick up a pylon here unless uh, stalkers can get in range of that and they can so pylon safe but goody just again being annoying here there and everywhere and here we are once again into the main base but this time the stalkers shut it down very very quickly and uh, goody a few hellions already postured to start attacking over here uh, something under attack over here this command center uh, probably just from a hallucinated phoenix there it is the pesky little thing picked up the now that now that we found that though we know command center wasn't under any real threat and goody just moves into a defensive posture outside of his main uh, slash out of side of his uh, natural and he's now just going to sit here third base has been established for dns and uh He's uh, going for. The, he's actually adding on a second rover facility as well as the temple archives. So I kind of like the composition he's going to look to go for here. He's going to look to add on a few colossi again so he can sweep through hellbats and hellions nice and quickly in any big fight. But to follow that up, he's uh, getting the temple archives down. He's adding immortals as well so that he can you know, really have some push power against the tanks and against uh, with archons. You know they're so tanky. The immortals are very tanky as well. And uh, DNS actually moving out a little bit, but oh no, here the hellions in position. And uh, already roasting away some workers. You can see they've got five of them so far to the left hand side of the screen. So that's five workers gone. And uh, a couple of more going to go down as well. Six and seven. And oh no, DNS has moved a bit too more too far forward. He's lost one of his. Uh, he's actually lost one of his colossus. And now he's uh, he's going to take a little bit of damage. And he, these tanks are going to start sieging up. And DNS may be in a bit of trouble here. He does have plus two upgrades against no upgrades from Goody. Goody. He's got a Photon Overcharge available as well, and he's probably going to use that on the uh, third base over here. I think uh, that's probably the best option for him. Uh, these Stalkers are going to come in. They do have Blink. They can Blink on top of these tanks, and that's exactly what he's going to do. I think DNS will be able to clean this up. He loses his uh, second Colossus, though, uh, but he will be able to clean up the rest of this army. Can he save his Nexus? He should be able to, especially with the Blink forward, to help out. And there we go. He's going to be able to clean this up just in time. He's got some Corona Boost on that. We make some workers from there, get the shields back up on it nice and quickly as the Vikings from Goody do escape. But DNS holds on, and that's pretty important here. He actually takes an army supply advantage of 70 to 60, as Goody actually holds a 15 worker lead. So Goody, maybe with a few too many SCVs right now, and he's continuing to build more. Hellbats, and uh, now Banshee's being added on once again here. At this point, maybe a Stargate would be nice to add on, just to add on a few, maybe, uh, Phoenixes to clean up them Banshees. Could be very useful. Looks as though, uh, DNS is not going to go back into Colossi production after seeing the Vikings already out for his opponent. St uh, the shield's slowly rebuilding here on this next now as he warps in some more Zealots. Uh, Zealot Charge been researched? Yes, it has, so... Zealot charge is up and ready. We see another okay, a banshee coming around this right hand side of the map. That's gonna look to come into the third base and defend there. You know, I'd love to see just a uh, cannon. Uh, maybe that's what these pounds are for. Cannon added on here would be perfect to just deny any kind of real banshee harassment. Uh nothing in the main there's a single cannon in the main, but it's a bit out of position if a banshee comes in here, for example, and a banshee okay, that's actually an S E V, not a banshee, so this Banshee is going to come forward, it's going to start getting some work hills there, uh, okay, he's actually going for the Nexus. Taking down the shields on that, Stalkers blink forward as fast as they can. Where's the Observer? Okay, there is an Observer here, this Banshee will go down, does some damage though, and that Nexus continues to fall dangerously low. Corona Boost on that now would just be, considering he's got so much energy, Corona Boost right now on that may very well just be exactly what he needs, just to build them shields up faster. And as we see some, uh, a couple more Templars, a couple more Zealots being warped in. Goody going for the big move out here. Scouted though by the Hallucinated Phoenix. And this is a big, big factor of course as well. Being able to see the army coming across the map and knowing when it's coming towards you is always going to be uh, very, uh, pretty much awesome when uh, it comes to actually uh, being ready to fight it. You know, you don't have to react on the fly. You have time to prepare what you're going to do. He sees where it is right now. How is he going to go about this? This wall off to prevent any Hellions moving forward as their tanks. Are they going to start seeing so many Hellbats here? Here we go. Guardian Shield going up. He's not going to fight into this. 
and uh, he's just gonna wait but he's uh, gonna lose quite a bit these uh, Banshees are probably gonna take down this Nexus phone overcharges used but the Banshee DPS is pretty high and there we go Nexus down so no third base anymore from DNS and now he needs to try and come in from pretty much every angle to just shut this down these gateways might actually be hindering him at this point as uh, Vikings chase forward they're gonna try and get that mothership core a few more zelts open in here and uh, when is DNS going to move forward? Where is his move? Here he is. Here we go. There's not that many tanks in this army. It's mostly held by the Zealots charge on in to start this engagement. A lot of uh, Immortals struggling to fight in the back. Immortals to the left hand side are going to sweep on through here. And this army for damage. He's killed off this base. He's killed off some gateways as well. Uh, another Banshee. Is that going to go down? No. There's no detection apparently. Okay. There is somewhere. Where's the Observer? There it is. And another Banshee goes down as well. So. DNS takes again a, a supply lead uh, in the army and now might be the time to utilize that. He's uh, going to be about 20 supply up and he's got plus 3 against 2 1 upgrades. So yeah, I guess it's kind of fairly even. He's going to move across here. Let's see what he can try and do. He should be able to deny this base from coming up and this is going to be pretty big if he can do just that. In fact, there's not even that much considering what he just uh, killed off from Goody. This doesn't look like that big of an army. In all honesty, we do see some Hellions, of course, moving around, looking for the counterattack over here, since this wall has been taken down. A single Immortal may be able to help with that, but it doesn't matter. DNS is moving forward. He's looking for the kill right now. Hellbats are doing a lot of damage. The tank's doing a lot of splash damage from the back as well. These Immortals are the real the problem, though. How is he going to deal with them? I'm not sure if he will. Some more tanks from the production lines are going to come out. They're going to start seeing up. The Immortals still pretty much on full shields. A blink forward. Stalker. Uh, uh, Banshee's still in the sky. Stalkers are all dead though. A single Archon will have to deal with that now and he will get it. And now he's actually going to be able to maybe pick off this base. Hellions are cleaned up in this mineral line. 14 workers killed. But uh, a bunch of workers being killed over here. Of course, Goody, he had a lot of workers to begin with. But now his natural's under attack and this is his production line. However, the Banshees are absolutely huge and there is not enough anti-air right now. This Archon needs to turn around before he loses too many of his Immortals. And there we see the immortal, uh, Archon does turn around. We're going to have another fight here once again as the tank goes down very, very quickly. Hellbats are going down as well. Is DNS going to be able to break through here? Is he going to bring ESC back into this game? It look like he, looks like he might because now he's going to break the third base. Going to get a uh, Orbital Command here very, very quickly. And uh, this Orbital Command has to lift almost immediately as well. SCVs are going to try to escape, but a huge amount of them are going to go down. 24, 30 in total. And uh, Goody... He's going to lose this orbital command. It's going to blow up above the rest of his uh, units. And DNS doesn't want to uh, overcommit too much, fighting up a ramp, like, uh, fighting against the high ground like this. He's uh, got a good advantage for himself right now. He doesn't want to throw that away. And a lot more stalks are out. Though. So these banshees are finally going to stop doing the huge amount of damage they've been doing so far. Another orbital command. Is it going to go down? Yes, it is. The SCVs aren't here in time. And that blows up and uh, now DNS is on the hunt for the rest of these command centers. He's going to find one of them here and he's going to be able to blink on top of that. Uh, his observers should give him high ground vision if he needs it to blink up to continue chasing a couple of orb command centers over this side as well. And uh, DNS didn't quite spot that one there or that other one. So this uh, command center going to fall down. And what does Goody do from here? He can't mine on these two bases which he's, which he's got. He needs this base here and he cannot get to it. DNS just has to camp the low ground, and if he camps the low ground, Goody can't move down, and he can't build anything else either. DNS still mining, of course, re-establish this third base. Again, workers killed is pretty crazy in the game. 56 against 35 in total. And a couple more Archons are being added on in here. Hell Hellion run by once again. Goody never going to give up with these. They're a great way of doing damage, of course, and uh, denying the economy of his opponent, which is something he really needs to stop in full force right now. But look at this. We see him move up a ramp, and it's just going to be DNS attacking in. Is he going to have enough to push on through? Well, I think he just might. He blinks on top of these tanks under these Banshees, and they are all going down. A couple of Archons remaining as well, as uh, he's actually going to get turned away. Oh, DNS. And he's losing 16, 17 workers as well. Now more stalkers come in. He really needs these stalkers. These stalkers are crucial. Taking down one, two, three, and the fourth banshee. And that was absolutely huge. That was what he exact exactly what he needed. As he's going to come back in, and now he's going to be able to take down this army a little bit more easily. Then banshees were the real damage dealers that were untouchable in the skies. And now another banshee comes in, but there's enough observers. There's enough stalkers. GG called, and DNS saves against all authority for now, and puts the scoreline as three to two.
with uh, against all authorities still trading. So DNS needs to take two more maps here if he wants to win this. Yes, C going to send out their next player in just a moment. It's going to be Durian. So we're going to head very quickly into quick commercial break, guys, so we can get our next game set up. Don't go too far. I'm just going to go get a drink myself. But when we come back, it'll be Durian versus uh, DNS. Match here between ESC Gaming and against all authority. We're getting into our, ne <coughs> our next game here. It is map number six. And DNS is looking to bring this back from 1 3 down to maybe a victory for against all authority. Match point is still in the hands of ESC. Their next player, Durian, making this a ZVP on Waystation. Let's see what is going to happen as we do load on up. What is my main race? Asks fr Funny Fruit in the chat. My main race is Terran. Now my Terran is probably just about as good as my Zerg right now. And probably just about as good as my Protoss as well behind that. So that's uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. Alright, well, we're in game. Finally, after having some issues getting one of the streamers in here into the lobby. But here we are in the upper left hand corner spawning on long positions on Waystation. This could be a long one. Against all authorities, oh, blah, 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 against all authorities, DNS. And in the lower right, we have the purple. A Zerg player representing ESC, it's Durian. Let's see what he's going to get up to here, because he's the player who always plays these kind of tricky styles. You know, he does things a little bit different to other people. Yeah, plays things a little bit odd. So let's see what he's going to get up to here today. Currently sitting on match point. If he wins this, he takes it home for ESC, and they move on to being four-one in their group. Yeah, and against all authority, they currently sit two-two. So win for them would actually put them ahead of ESC. Where uh, whereas a loss, of course, is going to put them down actually near to the kind of middle to bottom of the table. So big difference here, depending on their result. An opportunity to bring down one of the higher teams in the league right now. It's all on DNS's shoulders. Can he do it? Goody going on a free kill streak, doing all the damage so far for ESC. Psionic earlier, he uh, got a kill against Ares, but that was about it. So uh, let's see what's going to happen here. We see a Gadex fan going to be coming down on these very long positions. This is a very large map and the rush distance, of course, and uh, this position is absolutely huge. As if we just scroll along here, you can see it takes absolutely forever to get all the way over here and that's zoomed out so <coughs> uh, so yeah there we have it <coughs> that's a, it's a very long map natural and third base I feel fairly easy to hold actually I mean if you zoom out once again I mean as long as you can kind of stand here you can pretty much defend your third base and your natural yeah you're kind of out in the open so you have to be a little bit careful but with a watchtower here you're pretty much completely aware that there's only going to be stuff attacking you from this direction or this direction so having the third base is fairly easy to take let's see what these guys uh, are going to do about it. the fourth base is pretty far away though it's uh, kind of pretty wide to defend the fourth and the third so let's see what happens let's see how things go and uh, let's see if this yeah, game even gets to that sort of stage as we have a quick pause from Durian as he has delay so He's going to be, uh, I assume, looking to uh, fix that in a, for a couple of moments here. Mm -hmm. It looks as though we're going to go once again, though, so not too much of a delay, just a quick moment or so. We're now back into things. So. <clears throat> against all authority. DNS throwing down the uh, natural nexus here, going for the expand from the gateway, of course. He has actually invested in the Zealot here. Interesting, I feel. Considering it's a large map, uh, still investing in the Zealot. He does see uh, Zergans coming across with his probe. This probe, I don't believe, will make it back home without dying. So I guess it can take three more hits. But it's only halfway across the map, and there's going to be one of them right now. That puts it down to two hits as these Zerglings continue to chase. Are they going to be able to get this? One more hit to go, and I think they are. It's going to be very close. Is this actually going to come in? Is this going to stop it? Ah! The Zerglings keep on chasing. The probe was on two health. They're going to survive. We got some shields up, and that was enough. And these Zerglings 
chase it to their deaths, and uh, poor Zygmunt's now dead, leaving a pretty nasty mark on the floor. Wow. Game paused. Oh my god, how many pauses are we going to have today? I think this might be the record number of pauses ever in a single best of seven series. Ever. I really do feel like that. Dean has been very minded about it though, so uh, let's just take ourselves a moment while uh, Julian. Uh, <laughs> as it looks as though we might actually uh, uh, restart uh, the game. Durian is uh, gonna restart SC2, so we're gonna have to uh, go for this here and uh, jump on out and get this set up. So we're gonna have a couple of moments here, guys. I'm just gonna have to start setting this up. So excuse me if I uh, lose my focus doing this. But thanks for tuning in so far. Hope you're all having a good time uh, so far today. Hope you're. Uh, all having fun. This is the SC2 Improved Team League. If you've not seen the SC2 Improved Team League before, then welcome. We hope you enjoy the show. If this is your first time on the stream, do uh, make sure to come and uh, check it out again in the future uh, by hitting that follow button to see when we go live. Currently, just inviting our players to get uh, ready to uh, go once Durian gets back online. So it shouldn't be too long here, guys. It should just be uh, a couple of moments getting this set up. Durian just restarting his SC2 due to serious lags. So. We're only about five minutes in the game. And we're just waiting on Durian to get uh, the restart. <laughs> and uh, there he is. So hopefully this should all be fixed right now. We'll invite him, we'll invite him in. And uh, once he's in, we should uh, have these two players ready. And then we should be all set to go once again, guys. So, this uh, wasn't as much of a delay as uh, we thought it was going to be. And uh, let's just take it back a few moments and get going here so going back into the game it's going to be way station we are about five minutes in so it should only take a minute or so to recover this as uh, we load load this up still cheering for ESC gaming in the chat is Artox Chris who is everyone else cheering for is anyone cheering for against all authority I don't think we've had any against all authority cheers all day we had um, we had Gorkum saying he, uh, CVP is actually his favourite matchup to watch and play, which is awesome. Always good to bring you guys your favourite matchups. See, I, I like watching CVP compared to other matchups, but TVZ, I don't think anything can contest a good TVZ. How did the one hit only do one damage to the probe? It was actually because the probe will have regained a little bit of shields. So when it hit, uh, he will have, uh, he will have uh, regained like uh, three shields, and then when he hit, or oh, he will have regained four shields, so then we hit he took away the shields and he took away one of the health. Alright, so it looks as though we should all be set. And uh we resume. Three, two, one, and we're gonna be back into this. Let's just uh get the scoreboard set back up here and uh have a look at what was going on. Alright, so it doesn't look like too much really changed. Uh, clearly nothing's much really changed, right? We've had the game paused and then we've resumed from the replay. But nothing too crazy is happening in the game. Uh, we do see three extra gateways coming down, so we might see something a little bit aggressive out of DMS. Sends a probe out on the map. Oh, okay, he just sends it out front. Is he going to send it out? What's he going to do? He's sending it towards his third base now. Uh, checking around for that. Uh, but not able to. Checking around just over here, doesn't actually find anything though. It's a long way to go if he wants to go out and put a proxy pylon down to utilize these extra gateways. So, let's see what he wants to do. He may very well move out with a warping of units and just go from there. His probe continuing to move now, so he's uh, potentially going to commit to this. We do only see Durian on two bases though, with a spine crawler and a road draw and finish, so any kind of attack is not really going to do too much, I don't think. Uh, in this situation. As, uh, the first few lings do actually find the first pylon here. It should be saved though. But immediately Duran is going to know that something is coming towards him. DNS is going to be able to clean up these three zerglings. 
And, uh... Another spine crawler coming down. Durian committing a lot to his defense right now. Another uh, pylon coming in. Is DNS going to be able to break through here? I don't think, uh... <coughs> he's going to be able to. Uh, I mean, there's just so many roaches. A couple of queens out in the front as well. And uh, for now, GNS not really able to push too far for, for, for forward. Will find himself an overlord at this third base. So he's going to be able to kill that. I didn't actually mean to get June's vision. I meant to get DNS's. Sees that overlord. Going to be able to pick that off nice and quickly. And uh, picks that off. No third base with Durian, of course, but GNS isn't in that bad of a position. He started up his robo facility nice and early. He's kind of stopped warping in units, so he's not committing too much further to this as it stands. He's got a recall to get out of here once he feels like he's traded enough against these uh, roaches, perhaps. Uh, time warp actually comes down here, and he's actually going to do a pretty good job. Three roaches dead already, and a load of sorgers left over. Killing off a couple of active creep tumors, he still continues to push forward. Durian taking a lot of damage right now in this game. There's another roach down. And now uh, D DNS could continue to attack onto that uh, Roach Roaring. Doesn't look as though he wants to, though. And a great trade uh, there for DNS. You can see very efficient by him so far. If drone is going to sneak into the third location, though, to build a hatchery for Durian. He is going to move some Roaches out to uh, be able to uh, try and take this pylon down. Zergans are going to come in from behind. This should be enough. We've only Stalkers here. A couple of Zelds. This shouldn't be enough to uh, kill. And one Stalker goes down during the recall. And this is fourth back. So Durian holds on. And the game continues. And uh, look at this. Well, I think I know what our follow up's going to be. It's going to be an immortal all in. Already we see the first immortal popping out. Second immortal, Corona Boosting as well. Three more gateways coming down, which takes us up to seven gateways in total. So DNS, he knows how he wants to follow this up. And after killing off so many early roaches, I think this could work out very well for him. I mean,. Durian hasn't rushed this third base out, he's not been able to take it until just now, but not being able to take it until just now does have its consequences, he's not going to have as much production as he maybe would like, he's going to be very limited on lava, he has just 9 lava right now and he's got just about enough money to uh, spend it, he's up on 56 workers, he needs to make sure he pretty much bakes only w uh, units from now on, as uh, we see another probe coming down here, it might run into a zergling though, it is, it's found! So immediately here, DNS needs to uh, not make the pylon, I was going to say, but he makes it anyways. So revealed to Durian is this pylon, and he knows this is here. Mothership Core is going to try and come and uh, save it, but against the number of Zergans which are coming across, I don't think he will be able to. So this pylon is going to go down, going to have to cancel this, start up another pylon as well, so he can get his attack moving as soon as possible. Two Immortals here, three Immortals here, ready to go. An Observer coming out as well, no War Prism, interestingly enough. As uh, the next probe comes along, and now Durian is in full-on unit production mode. A lot of Hydras coming out, but you've got to remember, Hydras, they have high DPS, but they need the units to tank as well, and they need to be able to get in range, so the force fields are going to be very important. Roche speed and plus one missiles does finish up here. No upgrades for our Protoss player, so that plus one for the Zerg will help out quite a bit. As DNS moves across the map, he is looking to take this to an ace match here uh, with the Immortal all in. Follow up to the 4 gate attack. Is he going to be able to do it? There's two spine crawlers currently burrowing. DNS, is he going to push forward right now? Is he going to go for it? It looks as though he will. He's got force fields, remember, and he's going to look to utilize them as best he can. And here we go. The engagement occurs. The Zerglings close the distance. Force fields come down. Mothership core goes down very, very quickly. Immortals pretty much untouched right now. Immortals pretty much untouched right now. Stalkers are starting to shred through these uh, hydras pretty quickly. Zealots coming in as well. And oh, a spike coming down. But it doesn't make much of a difference as Durian is seeming to lose absolutely everything. 14 more links, 5 more hydras on the way in. And uh, continuing to push forward here. These uh, mortals need to be very careful. Drones already being pulled. And is Durian just going to lose right now? It looks as though he might. Doesn't matter if he loses the Roach one. He can still make hydras. But hydras on their own. Are they going to be enough without anything in front to tank for them? Zerglings are coming forward once again here. And still all three immortals survive. And it looks as though the drones are coming off the line, but so many of them going down, and Durian is in serious trouble. He needs to clean this up with these drones, but I don't know if he's going to be able to. Only a handful of Hydra Discs left, but two of the mortals have fallen. Drones coming from the third base as well, and this is going to continue. The higher War Prism may go down now, and DNS is going to be held back. He's going to have to fall back here, and uh, he's going to be chased away. He might even lose the rest of his stalkers. However, he's done damage. He's done significant damage. 23 worker kills, and that means he's going to be able to go back home and tech fairly safely here with that amount of damage done. Durian can't really just keep on making units. He has to make a round of drones first at least. 
And uh, DNS going to fall back home. He starts up the Robo B already, and Immortal's already on the way to try and join in. Uh, another thing he is uh, probably going to want to do is uh, add on a forge to start his upgrades going if this is going to turn into a longer game. Yeah, nice little control there. Picks off a Hydralisk, which is at the front. Alright, so uh, Pylon is picked off here. And DNS. Not in the worst positions, he is falling behind on upgrades as plus two missile attacks does start. And the close eye and extended fernal lance now coming out. Obviously taken down, a uh, pylon gonna get taken down as well so they can actually move out of his natural. And um I mean the game's gonna quieten down for a little while here. Durian has taken the full opportunity of this though, he's drawn up like crazy, up to sixty five workers now. And also during this he's actually started up an infestation pit and he's gone into a hive, so he's gonna start uh, really taking a bit of an advantage in this game, despite it seeming fairly even at the current point in time. It looks as though DNS wants to take this third base over here Durian has pretty good vision though and it looks as though DNS may just go for one more attack off of these two bases Zergling spots the army potentially moving out, actually catches this probe as well with the Zergling from the watchtower Hive is finished and DNS needs to hit pretty much now. Extended Thermal Lance is about to finish up here. Two Vipers on the way and this is DNS's time and he needs to go before the Vipers get too much energy otherwise them Colossi are going to be pulled forward and once them Colossi are pulled forward they're going to die very quickly and there's not going to be much firepower left in this army. Still no upgrades plus two probably will finish here for Durian and that's going to make a big difference in this fighting as well. As he moves forward he's going to try and uh, fight before uh, DNS is ready to. Picks off a Stalker. And the Vipers are now out. Where are they hiding? They're gathering energy from the main base. So they're going to have the energy for the Abducts. And that's going to be absolutely huge here. As DNS is pushing onto the Creep. He uh, doesn't want to extend too far forward. He's got a Mothership Core. He's got some energy on his Mothership Core as well. He's going to look to use it. Where are the Vipers? They need to be here right now. They're coming from the main base. And here we go. Here's the fight. Durian is trying to buy a little bit more time to get these Vipers in position. DNS sees them though, he knows he needs to be very careful of them. Uh, hallucinates some Colossi, but the real ones are abducted. He pulls them back though, and uh, these two Colossi are actually going to live, which is pretty crucial. However, now one goes down, and now the second as well. And it looks as though DNS is going to get cleaned up here. It looks as though ESC are going to take this match as Durian pushes on through. He surrounds this army, but is he going to have enough? He's ahead in supply right now, but it looks as though... DNS is actually continuing to push forward. It looks ah uh, well, okay, it's very close, but okay, with reinforcements, Durian's definitely going to be able to take this. He's going to push this all the way back, and uh, he's going to be able to clean up the rest of these units here. As a few more stalkers get warped in, he falls back just for a couple more seconds. Waits for the rest of his reinforcements. There's no real firepower in this army anymore for DNS, and with plus two. Missile attacks, the roaches and the hydras are going to just cleave through them stalkers, and there we have it. ESC Gaming are victorious, having played Carnage Esports earlier in the week and falling 2-4, to four, they now do take down against all authority 4-2 and they get back on track, moving on.